now we have the opportunity to tell a new Indiana Jones story for a modern gaming audience. We're just normal men. What do you mean, normal men? We're just innocent men. <laughs> Yep, yep. You're always trying to throw me off by making me laugh before we start. <laughs> How we doing, everybody? How we What's doing? up? What's up? All right, let's go to it. Hello to everyone viewing and hello to the chat. This is the podcast. So good you'll want to go streaking in the quad. It's a one-stop shop for rebels, red coats, and sanity vigilantes. I'm your host, B Hop, alongside co-host, my brother from an English mother, Mr. Diabolical Tuna. And here this week, we've got Thrash Potatoes coming back with us. So let's throw on our blue and yellow spandex like the X-Men. We're going to hop into Blackbird. And as the song says, now witness the quickness with which we carry on. Let's roll. Oh, my God. We're your culture council, and we're here to have some fun. <clears throat> now, how are you doing, Mr. Tuna? Doing good? I'm good, man. I'm good. I just want to make a special mention. Mr. Mm -hmm. Woodrow, it has been too long, my brother. Where yes. the hell have you been? Where have you been? I've been scouring, scouring social media, Discord. We thought you'd been kidding that. Bro. And sold yeah, into I'm good. I'm good. Um, we did uh, the first Power Station yesterday, which is going to be a bit of a wrestling gaming kind of show, which you know, you were really well, there. too. Gladly kind of took part, and we had a really amazing turnout. We had kind of 50 people, which I did not expect, so... Um, it's been really good. Scott Stavros, my man, thanks for joining us. Oh, um, shit, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, what's we, up? we're doing. And of course, Mr. Gobster raising raising hell as always. Sweet, so, sweet, sweet. Yeah, we're all well. good. You know, um, I'm still feeling a little bit shaky, but a bit better than I have been the last couple of weeks. So I'm back on the Dr. Pepper, back on the hard stuff. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, and ready, ready for it, ready for another couple of hours of absolute uh, bullshittery. All right. Well, I say, excuse me. Let's uh, let's bring out, uh, or is our guest back or not? He had to. I think he went to go do something. He's, he's still he's still uh, on. Uh, All right, we'll bring him on assignment. He's ready. So, so yeah. just as, uh, Joe is also on assignment. I've sent him out to be the Easter Bunny. Yeah, uh, he's <laughs> Easter eggs to all the boys and girls across the planet. Yeah, uh, shout out to Joe. Uh, he had to take care of some things. Just want to know we're thinking about him. We appreciate him, and he's here with us in spirit. Always uh, thinking about you, Joe. Mm, very dirty too, man. We like him young, like you should. <laughs> you know he's gonna clip that at some point. All right, but uh, but yeah. So um, once we once we get thrashed out here, we'll talk about uh, X Men ninety three for a few minutes, and then not too long after that, we've got some other good stuff to go over. But we just got through watching the third episode of X Men ninety seven. I keep saying X Men ninety three because we're talking about episode three. But we just got through watching episode three of X Men ninety seven. It was called uh, Fire Made Flesh, and uh, and we'll uh, Thrash watched it too. Me, Thrash, and Tune all watched it at the same time, and we literally just finished before we came in here. And I, you know, I can't wait. To, I want I, I want to get Thrash's uh, his view on some things too because. We're all going to have some fairly raw reactions, but I mean, my reactions, other than there's one thing, and we're going to bring it up, but other than one thing that kind of bothered me, man, it was my favorite episode so far. What about you, Tuna? Yeah, look, it was it was good, and I find it interesting that all the kind of chat about it has kind of died down a little bit, which is always kind of a positive sign. You know, no one's really been bitching about it. It's just dropped off the radar, so I thought it was a good episode. You know, I mean, X-Men isn't my main kind of thing that I like to enjoy. Um, there was one or two little things that were a little bit kind of bit odd, you know, kind of morphs fascination with Wolverine. And, you know, let's just get to the point. We know what you're trying to say, but, mm -hmm. um, but no, overall, it was. I, I thought it was okay. You know, it was a good 20, 25 minutes, kind of that you can kinda just focus in on. So, so yeah, for me, um, for me, I really liked it. Uh, it was the best one yet. Um, and spoilers for anybody watching. So you know, we pick up where. Um, we pick up where uh, Jean has returned home. We find out Scott's had a baby with the clone. She goes ape shit. Sinister steals the baby. They have to go get him back. Um, he ends up infected with a techno organic virus. Instead of it being apocalypse like in the comics, it's sinister this time. And instead of Ascany coming from like the year 3999 and taking baby cable into the future to cure him, he goes with Bishop into the future. 
And then, just, um, in yeah, the chat, one, one thing I would say is that what for me, I mean, I know my basics, you know, like I know who a majority of the X Men are. Mm-hmm. And one thing I kind of noticed is that it was really good that you didn't need to know any of that. It was handy that I did. Um, but you could just watch this stuff and, you know, there, have a blast with it. I found you, that was really good. There was no kind of like hidden references or anything that a normal mm-hmm. person wouldn't understand. Right, right. So you would say that. Um, I mean, I think they did a really good job. We always say that uh, they don't do such a good job. Like Rachel says, they, they're they supposed mm. to show and not have to tell. And this was a case of them actually being able to show and not having to tell. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you didn't have to be, um, I'm ready to bring out, um, uh, let's bring out Thrash Potato, man. Come on, from Thrash Potato's Guitar Boom. Shack. Yes. Boom. Hey, Thrash, welcome back, brother. What's up, man? How y'all doing? Doing well. We're very glad to have you back. And um, Oh, thank you for having me, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat watching. If you're watching on X, feel free to hit the link on my Twitter page to the YouTube page up here, trying to get the subs up. And then if you go to the description in today's episode, you'll see a link to uh, Tuna's uh, YouTube. You'll see a link to Thrashes and every guest we've ever had on here. So it's, it's been uh, amended, but yeah, we, we've got some links down there. I'll talk to you about that later. Oh, son of a bitch. Is the stuff still there? <laughs> well, what needs what needs to be there is there. That's, that's, okay, that's what okay. I'm going to say. Hey, hey, I know. I, I, man, I, I trust you, man. Brother from an English mother. If you say it works, i fucking fine. Um, I trust you. So we got Thrash back with us. We, um, yeah, make sure you hit that like and subscribe and share. Please shout out to Gobster. He's going to be joining us very soon after we get off of this topic. But, hey, um. Bro. My raw reaction, uh, I enjoyed it. I thought the deal was more for like, like, I don't know, like arousingly, like he got aroused watching Wolverine take a shower or whatever, even though it wasn't really Wolverine, it was a vision, but uh, he didn't know that. And so Thrash, your raw reactions, man. I said, I thought it was the best episode yet. Um, Tuna says it was really good. You didn't have to know a lot about the X-Men. They kind of let you know everything without having to go into like an over amount of exposition. And then uh, the only other thing I'll say, too, is I, th- I think it was paced pretty well. It wasn't so much just talk, just talk, just talk. It, I thought it was the most the best paced episode they've had yet. What's your thoughts? Thresh? Right. Oh, man, I, I actually like this one. I thought it was really good. And I, I, I was a little annoyed how they're trying to add in the whole Morph and Wolverine thing. That was kind of a little cheesy, but it wasn't overwhelming. You know, all in all, it was a good episode. You know, I like the way that it's like you said, it's more of a show not tell type of thing they did a good job this one was really good and uh minimal like i said any type of message i guess you can say but all in all it was a great cartoon i liked it it was a good episode i didn't feel like they killed us with the message you know and they haven't really overly killed us uh Mm. any you know little they'll have that little j6 stuff and 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 there's hints about the morph thing but thankfully what they did today was a lot more like um like things used to be where you kind of leave things up to your interpretation. The, the more thing was over, but you know what, if they, I guess if they want to have one, whatever, but it just depends on how they, what do they do with it? Are they going to have him sleep with Wolverine and piss everybody off? You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. And, uh, overall, I'm giving this. They haven't one done a lot of Wolverine in this, have they? No, no, he wasn't. He was, and he stayed at the mansion with Gene. He didn't even go uh, after Sinister. So he wasn't in this one very much. It was Wolverine light, which is good because, that's been a problem for the comics and the movies is they, they personally, in my opinion, struggle on being as successful sans Wolverine. You know what I mean? It's like right, the right. comics, you know, at one point tuna, they stuck Wolverine um, on, he was like on the X-Men. He, had, he was in multiple X-Men books, multiple solo Wolverine titles. Yeah. Then he joined the Avengers and was in yeah. like more than one. I mean, it's just ugh, overexposure. But so anyway, uh, before we move on, I'm going to look at a couple funny articles that have to do with this. And then we're going to bring in Gobster and go to some uh, craziness and funniness and all the usual stuff that we do here on the council. Make sure to like, subscribe and share if you're on X. Get a link off the Twitter page over here. Come over and subscribe and get all the links in the description for other people to subscribe for our guests and other council members. Anywho, Wes from Thinking Critical. Shout out to him at Wes underscore from underscore TC. He's got a page called uh, Think or Page. He has a YouTube show called Thinking Critical. And uh, I saw that he posted this. It said there was an article. I didn't know where the article was from yet. And he says, turning boys franchises into girl franchises is the death of entertainment. Okay. So I, I go and I want to find that article and find out like where it is. Right. And of course, 
Let's see. Of course, God help us. I think it's the Mary Sue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Like, oh, Jesus. The accurate up-to-date source for everything saw, you need to know on modern culture. Right. I call it a rag and it I call it a rag and, <laughs> and it means so many <laughs> all these crazy chicks that work for it and the guys might as well be chick. So um before I read this and then we'll move on to some other topics. What uh last week we pretty much had a group consensus. It was around like uh what six or seven. What do you guys for the first two episodes? I think uh I had it between like a six or a seven out of 10, man. I give the sucker probably a seven and a half, maybe even an eight. It was pretty good. What about you thrash? Oh, I think I'm going to go for an eight. Cause I mean, it, it kind of took me back a little bit, you know, one or two things yeah. pulled me out, but they put me right back in. So I'll probably give it like eight, maybe even eight and a half. They, I think they did a great Sweet. job on this one. This one, I actually sat while watching it and like the first two, I, you know, like we talked about last week, the first two when we watched those, I was so like clenched up. I don't think I sat back and enjoyed it as much. I need to go back and rewatch them. But I, although having said that, I feel like this episode was that much better because that this one actually got me kind of pumped up and I was really enjoying it. Um, I, I, I dug it, man. I dug. What about you, Tony? What do you give out of 10? Um, I'd stick. I'd stick to seven and a half to eight, primarily uh, Cyclops being a little bit of a bitch. Yeah. Towards the end of the episode was a bit of a downer. I mean, you know, he had a little bit of a, a, a wobble. Spoiler alert, apologies. Um, <laughs> he has a little bit of a wobble about, uh, you know, kind of being abandoned or whatever the fuck. And I'm like, dude, like, you can shoot oh, lasers yeah. out of your eyes. Right. Have any of you ever been abandoned? Yeah, well, you know, Batman <laughs> lost his fucking parents. He doesn't have any special powers. And he beats the shit out of motherfuckers all day long. And nobody sees him bleed, you know, you know to use the James Bond expression. Right. Um, it was a little bit windy. Yeah, that's where I'd put it. You know, eight, I guess, is fair. Yeah, he was he was a little whiny, wasn't he? Oh man. Oh yeah, yeah. Scottish Davers. Uh he's, oh God the mirrors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're great. Shout out to Scottish Davers, man. You need to uh go subscribe to his channel. All right, so this is this, this is what this article says. Ranking the X-Men is never easy, but when you look at X-Men 97, there is some haughty energy to unpack. How else can you confidently exist in a superhero world without rocking cool outfits and knowing you're a beautiful crew? But oh, is it still oh, hell no <laughs> right. to rank them? Okay, all right. This is so stupid. I just wanted to see this. The ranking, this ranking, which will obviously not be including Jubilee or the younger characters in X-Men the animated series. That's like I'm surprised at that, with, to be fair. I mean, yeah, you know, being quite too. associated with certain elements. I'm surprised you put them straight at number one. I like more than fifty percent agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. In X Men Animated Series, and so I'm just gonna see. It's just because I want to talk about my hot team now that they're back in my life. Can you blame me? The X Men are beautiful. Charles really nailed down his leading team and said, "Quote: Pretty people with hot energy only, please." God help. So who is the hottest of them all? Saying, "Holy fuck. yeah!" This is this right. is like. It would be one thing if you knew they were trying to be funny, but I think this person is being unironic. Which uh, which of the X Men gives or this or the uh, bot that wrote this shit, the AI? Which of the X Men gives off right. that energy? Well, if Charles Xavier were here, this would be entirely different. But let's get into it. I ain't gonna get far into it. Just, okay, ten more. Technically, he can change into any being he sees. It's beneficial to the fight. So when shifting morph can be any number of bodies all at once. Okay. All right, nine beast. Someone has Good a smart fetish. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to hate McCoy, but whatever your beautiful face does for your hotness card, the minute you start quoting something, that goes maybe he has a big blue. <clears throat> Could be, but all that hair, you have to get to it, man. All right, Gene. One world. Depends which Gene, but what if you were with both of them? That's why I said, like, this shouldn't be a problem. Cyclops, I'd have been like, stay, stay, stay. We could all, we'll get a bigger bed. It'd be nice. Now, it depends right. what Jean Grey we're talking about. Right, right now, though, she's a bit more concerned with safety, and that's valid. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're just cruising through this because I don't want to stay on this much longer. All right. Seven is Scott. Six, Lucas Bishop. Lucas is his first name. I can't wait to see. <laughs> Wolverine's five. Okay. Okay. Even though you took elements away from her. Okay, whatever. That's cool. 
Whatever. One of my favorite characters. Who's number one? <laughs> oh, Is this yeah. a hot take? I don't know, but my God, am I in love with Gandalf. Someone obviously needs From to his- lay off the Pornhub, don't they? Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah you know, man. It, it's not good for you. It's really not good for you. So there's that. Yay. But um, I got I got a question though. I'm sorry. I got a question: Is why do they have to sexualize no, no, everything? Everything is sexualized. It's all, have, it's all they have. If they're not right, sexualizing may- children, they need to be sexualizing anything they can get their grubby little hands on. That's literally, literally yeah. making something out of nothing. Who? It just makes no sense. Why? Didn't think about mm. that. In Ninety-seven. Why are we I, thinking about that now? I guess because all they can do. It's one thing to be a horny teenager all the time, like when we were growing <laughs> up. But like these people, just right. everything they see is through the lens of sex. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's one of my favorite things. But you know, it just it it's places in the bedroom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, right. I don't want to so, sit there and talk to everybody about it. Right. It's just makes no sense to me. They're weird people, man. And they think it's being like progressive and open. I just find it to be rude and uncouth. This here right. uh, was, was something funny. I saw to move into something a little more controversial and stupid. X-Men 97 near perfect revival receives, um, receives one major backlash from Latin American community. What really happened? Okay. I just wanted to see what the backlash was. All right. Despite major X-Men 97 seemed disappointed with Latin American community with issues regarding the Latin American dub and changing character names. X-Men 97 made fans upset. Uh, he just, oh, okay. So it's just, they're upset with the dub. They replaced the entire cast in the Latin American Spanish dub. So they weren't using the original. So it wasn't anything too terribly controversial. Despite being an incredible revival, X-Men 97 seemingly disappointed the Latin American community. According to reports from Slash Film, people who grew up watching the Latin American Spanish dub of X-Men Animated found the latest show as a grave disappointment. Not for the storyline or animation, but 97's face and criticism because changing the entire cast. So, you know, guys, I had not even thought about that. So uh, they've got their favorite voice people, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I guess they have their favorites that, that they listen to. Um, Are we ready for uh, for our next next special guest? Oh, yeah. Let's bring out Gobster. All right. right. Look, I even turned this shit up on you. It's not about 50% British. (laughs) We did theory we could take over the world. God bless. God bless. What's up, Gobster? It's really good to see you again, man. We're uh, we're true. Being superstitious this week and wanted to repeat yeah, last great. week. Uh, to be on. Great to be on. Right. <laughs> we were all doing well, yeah, man. We were all uh, mm. we were all um, giving ourselves bruises, patting each other on the back, and we enjoyed last week so good. And we're so happy that we had the largest live turnout that we ever had been. We were riding high on that, and then we've done a few things since then that have had an unusually high amount of viewers too, and so they've been really supporting us, guys. So make sure you hit the links in the description. And go over to our guests. And also our, uh, putting links in X chat as well. So I know we can see X chat, but we can't post to it. So I have oh, yeah. in the chat on X. Okay. Well. So it'd be really and, helpful, guys. And I tell you what, if if uh Tuna, you're I know you, I forgot you watch over the X chat. If something comes up that y- you want us to highlight, man, let us know. And then also so we can see it. We can see um, what people are saying to us. Mm-hmm. We just can't say anything to them, which is a bit of a bummer. Right. And I can't highlight it like I can with the YouTube stuff, but uh yeah, yeah, we got Scottish Davros in here, Gobster. Oh, the legend. My homie. Uh, what is I, next? I just recently the legend, on the legend. Oh, that's awesome. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> so, shout out to everybody watching, yeah. man. Uh, Woodrow, it's good to see you again. We're done with the X-Men thing. It's just, uh, that's kind of like our little communal thing we're doing every week is, is watching something. This week, there wasn't anything crazy to get into. Wasn't a whole lot of news out there. It was just a good episode. Go watch it. I mean... I hate to advise you to give Disney money, but I, I, I enjoyed myself. So go give it a try and see what you think. <laughs> Comment below. But if you're watching, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. If you're watching on X, feel free to pop the link on my Twitter page. Come over here and subscribe and get all the links. We're also on Gobster, too. So, yeah, you guys feel free. Subscribe to all of us in the council and, yep. and everybody that's yeah, guests. We appreciate you. So, Gobster, other than just, like, any particular yeah. event? I'm getting ready to. Yes. We're, we're going to go over something funny, but just to ask you, how things been? You good? Did you enjoy your vacation? Oh, that. Yeah, oh man, that was an awesome vacation. 
totally chilled out. God's country, wonderful in the, scenery. In the nice supremacist chilled, countryside? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, so all that racist that. countryside, the amount of abuse I got. Yeah, the amount of abuse I got was just disgusting, to be fair. But, you know, <laughs> these are things you have to live with in a modern society. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was just it was a welcome break, and uh, I'm back into the madness now. So, oh, oh, very speaking true, of madness, very true. That, that leads us to our next insane segment. Let's see here. This is something Tuna sent me, man. And uh, I had to work, make sure that we looked at this because it cracked me up. You know? Let me bring it up. All right, let's see. <laughs> oh, oh, this one is great. <laughs> I haven't I watched this. I just it. like <laughs> I saw the first five seconds and went, oh, you know what would be funnier for because I knew since oh, you this seen is it to me, it was okay. And then I would trust it. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew it was okay to put out. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna wait and see it myself for the first time. Make sure I got my volume right. All right. Um, this is a queer fat club. Um I'm queer and fat. Okay, thank you for joining. <laughs> We're just um introducing ourselves at the moment. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, Joe? Yeah, uh, my name is Joe. I go by he, they, and uh, <laughs> I identify as 275 pounds. Okay, okay. Um, I feel like Jay is kind of making fun of me, though. I know it's kind of a shock. I know, kind of a new thing. I'm, I'm just, you know, monk. Do what? I said I apologize. Oh, no, you're good. Um, are you comfortable leaving the group at the moment? Why? Why? I'm, I'm not understanding why you're joining the group. This is the queer and fat group now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I came here for. Okay. Um, and you said you identify as fat? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, this is just for fat bodied people. Yeah, I understand. Oh. I, I identify oh. as a fat bodied person. I'm not understanding where you're coming from. Are you guys comfortable with me here? I mean, I'm pretty chill on my end. I'm not comfortable, no. Can we take like a vote? <laughs> oh, so yeah. um, this is a queer oh, fat legend. club. You know, that that we can great. identify as anything we want unless we disagree with it. You know? Exactly. They so so uh, yep. great job, dude. Whoever did that is like a king troll. <laughs> oh awesome. yeah. Well, is he is he trolling or is he proving a fucking he's a legend? Point? Absolute well, legend. I think well, he's more proving a point than anything. Proving the point. Bunch of hypocrites. Proving the point. Here. That's the right. important thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I yep. you know it's like remember when we that. watched that. That thing, uh, we watched a clip of some lady that was suing her son's school because they wouldn't go along with the uh, him being a dog or some shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so I love to see stuff like this because it's kind of uh, kind yeah. of getting using humor to push sanity, like what we do. Mm. So let's see what we got next, fellas. Yeah. I like so how you go. think, how you classify this as humor. Oh, I have to tune, or I would lose my, I would lose my mind. I really would. What's left of it anyway, and there's only so much left to lose. But it, I try yeah. to think things maybe are getting a little bit better. But now this is something you sent me. I liked, and and I don't know if this is saying things are getting better or not. But maybe now anybody familiar with this? Because I haven't watched it. I've just been seeing it. <clears throat> Museum, isn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. Have you legends? Have you another, seen this? another couple of legends? Legends people, in people people. doing the Lord's work. Isn't yes. It? Oh, I've seen this. This is sweet. Oh, I've hey, seen this one. Absolutely doing the Lord's Shout work. Out. Shout out. Oh, heck yeah. We're going to watch this. Shout out to everybody watching the chat. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, we just started watching some crazy stuff. We got a few different things we're going to take a look at. If you're watching on X, feel free to take the link out of uh, off my Twitter page. Come over here to the YouTube. Subscribe. <laughs> the like. link should be in the X chat, B. Oh, it'll be. Okay. Yeah. Click the, the link. I keep forgetting that. Uh, it's, yeah. It should be there in the chat. Yeah, it's in the it's in the chat for the thing that you're watching. So click that link, come over and subscribe, and then subscribe to all the council members and guests. We're trying to get our numbers up. Uh, last week was our most successful week. We had over 100 live viewers, and we really appreciated it. So help us do it again. But if we don't, we're still going to have a lot of fun one way or the other. At least I always do. <laughs> so yeah. Let's, oh, yeah. let's watch this. Amen. Amen. Oh. Is there no... All right, let's see. This is an awful audio easy. on this. Is there? I thought there was audio. I don't think there is. I don't think okay. Okay. Yeah, it okay. doesn't seem like it. All right. So no, there's no audio, silent. I don't think. I think it's just. It's a silent film about Chad's. 
Heck yeah. <laughs> and see, you know what? And anybody who's watching this, if you're gay, yeah, man, don't be offended. I, 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 you're, you're still my brother. I don't care about. I don't care about that. Isn't about that. There is a, this, this isn't is about that. These, these, the insanity is, that's going on. And no, uh, I can I can tell you a story about. I I know a little gay dude that owns an antique shop out in Hollywood, and when he it. sees it. He, when he sees a dude dressed up like a chick, it rages him. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He's like, dude, the, the, he's like, what's the point of that? Yeah. It makes us look stupid. You know, you know, I was like, I get it. You mean? And he's like, who cares who you're sleeping with? Why do you have to put it out like a Broadway show? Nobody cares in the first place. Exactly. And all these people are just driving over. It. I guess they don't realize Amen. what it is. But <clears throat> so um, the thing is, like, uh, so. Anybody, if you're watched and you're like, oh, okay, well, they, they hate gay people or something. No, nope, not at all. We associate with people on YouTube that are gay and are friends with them and do shows with them. So it's not like we're some sort of prejudiced people. I think this it's is about a mess. I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say that, you know, New Zealand, Auckland, wherever this is, that, you know, they probably have homeless, they have vulnerable people. You know, they probably don't have money for that, but they mm -hmm. have money for this stupid shit, you know, and this is going on all, you know, all over the world and people are getting really fucking fed up with it. Oh, yeah. Um, and, yep. and, and that's the thing is like you're pushing it and, and what people I would say to anybody who's young enough to not understand this yet. But in a normal world, you don't everything is not viewed through the lens of sexuality. Um, and it's, it's definitely not to children. I mean, maybe a lot of things. Yeah, they're, you know, they used you know, adults, you know, hot women in movies, whatever. I understand that. Yeah. Sex sells and it's exploited. But this is something completely different. This is tied to um, people would use that sort of stuff as an excuse to justify something like this. And this is tied to a message that's overall basically trying to rewrite how we think and how our society looks, feels, functions, and ends up, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah man. Oh, God. Shit makes me mad, man. But I like that yeah, those guys, you know, those guys are probably going to go to prison. Those, those, guys, those guys are going to go to prison for that shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. That's true. They were wearing hoods, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, but why? Shout out. Go ahead. What'd you say? You know I mean? Yeah, but what, why should they go to prison? Why should they even be arrested? What, the, what they're they... doing, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I would say that the, the vandals were the ones who put the crossing down in the first place. I like the rainbow road, road, though, though, isn't it? You know, <laughs> yeah. you know so, one man's rainbow road is another man's kind of... Pain in the ass. I'm looking for. <laughs> I just... Yeah. I mean, and... I mean, it's just, it boggles my it's mind, just, man. But the, the thing is, like, I feel bad for those guys, though, because I know, you know, we've seen stuff where people have been prosecuted or went to jail for similar things. Didn't they try to prosecute that git? That, git, that um, like, I would be a, a yeah. American saying git. <laughs> but th that kid that he was doing, like, donuts on one of those on the road, you know what I'm talking about? He was, like, oh, spinning his that. tires and shit. And uh, I think he got charged with something. They it's ridiculous. Oh yeah, if you don't know who they are, then. Oh yeah, he did. He got he got charged with criminal damage. Oh, yeah, we, um, uh, yeah. See, I think we covered it on here, but you know, now I realize it's hard to keep up with everything. The thing is, go ahead. Oh yeah, but the thing is, when you're forcing when you're forcing an ideology on people, people are going to get annoyed and they are going to yeah. push back. So what do you yeah. expect? Oh yeah, this is what's well, going to happen. Good money on and this the more shit, you push you know? it, the more. Well, the push, I mean, look, what, what day is it tomorrow? Easter, but it's tomorrow is Easter Sunday. Day. And oh, that's Joe ridiculous, Biden has man. made sure that... No, it's not. It is the day, yeah, but it's the day the Lord rose. Yeah, it's as simple as that. It's nothing else. Nothing else. It is the day that Jesus Christ rose from the grave. End of. That's well, it. Well, um... What's so the up? man um, who's ahead of one of the greatest countries in the world is go on. I don't know if we've got a bit of lag. Sorry, Gobby. Um, I was going yeah, to agree with that look. completely. Um, and I don't know if you've seen, obviously, because of, you know being being kind of fellow countrymen, the amount of councils over the last twenty four hours have put up these stupid posts saying about oh you know it's it's pride you know kind of yeah. you know, the point of the flag up it's you know kind of trying to visibility and like. Why are you overriding what should just simply be the Easter Bank holiday? Why are we doing this now? You know, do it next weekend. Do it, do, you know, do it whenever the fuck. Why now? On purpose, man. 100% on is, purpose. Yeah, it is. It is. Just, just, to, just to piss off yeah. the people that want to oh, be yeah. 
straight American yeah. English, just proud of their country. They just want to spit in our face, a hundred percent. That's what that's what I think. Because why? Yeah, You're exactly right. So much. Yep. Right. Crazy. Exactly right. Any day they could have done that. Any day, but is, but Easter. Go ahead, man. Sorry. Exactly. Now the thing is, the thing is, the UK is a Christian country. It's right. All, all our laws. Laws are set as a Christian country, so why are they destroying it? I mean, don't forget when I mean, like you had me this conversation, I wouldn't say anything like that. But I mean, I've just rediscovered my my religion. You know, I've decided to you know refine the Lord and you know find God again because I need something to believe in. Because in these dark days, as I said on the last one, when you see Satan walking the earth with all the crap that's going on now, if Satan exists, then God must exist. So, and we can see yeah. all along. And this is just. It's not right. It just really isn't right. A continual attack on religion. You remove, remove our religion, which it is now. The new religion is transgenderism. It's mm -hmm. gender dysphoria. It's pronouns. That's not. You can, you can actually track the fall of Western society with the fall of Christianity and faith and belief because right. we've got these new ones. And you can't turn around and say, Easter Sunday is anything other than Easter Sunday. Easter Even if Sunday. you don't believe yep. in exactly that's God what I was whatever, say, like it's Easter out of respect. Sunday. It always has been respect yeah. and it's tradition. A, you know, it's, and it's a tradition. Don't exactly, hurt Exactly, I, I respect that. Even right. if you don't believe. Exactly. I mean, I wasn't, to, as um, I said, until recently, I wasn't, recently, I wasn't Christian. But I respect. Yeah, go on. Do we have a thing while so Archer is going to make a point about. Um, you know, kind of celebration of Easter without mentioning the the actual religion and supermarkets are doing it now. Mm. Um, a lot of the Easter eggs, you know, they're now called something else. Oh yeah, yeah. I heard about that. You, know, <laughs> you, you think of Christmas, you know, it's you know it's Happy Holidays, it's all this kind of stuff. You know, the the attempt at eradication coming from companies of, of a religion, but at the same time, you're then getting shelves and shelves of kind of Ramadan bollocks and all that kind of stuff. It's like do that, but make sure that every other religion that you want to support gets the same amount of attention. Well, look at Well, look at London. Yeah. Look at London. Yeah. Lit up yeah. for Ramadan in a Christian country. Where's the Easter stuff? Ridiculous. Where's the Easter yeah. stuff? They'd burn it down it's or they'd tear it down. Probably. Simple as that. You know, it's you know why why are we celebrating? Well, the thing is, why should they? This is not right. I mean, I've just done a video which I'm processing now, which I'm going to put up later, um, where a woman's asking a police officer, "Why are you not arresting people with swastikas?" Because it's a hate crime, it's anti Semitic, and they go, No, it's not, it's, it depends on the context. It no, he doesn't. A swastika no, not at all. is anti Semitic, pure and simple. Yeah, but, but he actually sit the our copper stands there and quotes section 4a and section 5 of the Public Order Act and actually explains that in that act, I should be arresting them, but we're not. It's, it's just ridiculous. Well, when I get the video up later, you'll see the complete disdain for a woman asking a logical question. And the best, she's an American, by the way, guys. She's an American asking a question. Why is it? Why are you not arresting people? There's 15 people walking with swastikas. Why aren't you arresting them? And he basically went, well, it depends on the context, doesn't it? The police no, it does, no, anyway, does not they? defend. You know, the police like, is infiltrating. The police is infiltrating. Yeah. Gosh. You know, police don't want to do anything. But, you know, well, they are. They just, I mean, you see the one anyway. where ah, they don't want to get involved. No, I mean, did you see that one last week where they're actually shouting from the river to the sea, and somebody says to a cop who stood there, "Do you hear yeah. that? That's that's hate speech." And he goes, "Oh, I'm ever so sorry. I, I had something going on in my earpiece," <laughs> and you can hear it as clear as day. And his mate wasn't, and he went, well, "Your friend could hear it," and he went, well, "I didn't hear anything." Which, which they're the not person police. wouldn't even, they're wouldn't even go to the trouble police of pointing out. To if... get in the way of them. Right. Oh, no, go ahead, Gops. Go ahead. It was clear as day. It was, I mean, it was clear as day. You could hear it clear as anything on the video. So if you can hear it on the video and he was stood next to the copper, the copper could hear it and he turned a blind right. eye. And the second your police right. begin to turn a blind eye, there is no police. There is no law and order. And it's falling apart. Well, it, it, this country is falling apart. Something horrendous. Yeah. It's really frightening. 
It really is faster than the US, but the US, I think you'll kind of be uh, right behind us at this rate. Yeah, you guys are the oh, I think so. ground for the shit, and then we'll suffer. We'll suffer from what the results, what they learn from doing it to you guys, they'll they'll improve upon to do it to us. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's the same people anyway. Um, yeah. it it's pretty scary, but yeah, I'd say you know half the uh, at least half the police and military are probably they're bought into the cult, man. And then the other half, you oh, don't know the, which way they're going to go. British military's gone. It's but the the British oh, military's gone. They just, Our military's gone. It's so woke, so woke. Right. Go ahead, Thrash. Oh, I was just going to say it's it's a hundred percent. They're just trying to take every one of our values, everything that we that we hold dear, and they want to trash it because they they it's it's almost like like you have to you have to do certain things to go along with society, and instead of hustling, doing what you got to do, since they can't do it, they got to you know yell, scream, and make it to where we'll just change the system to to you know help us instead of just getting out there and handling your business, you know, and and people are agreeing with it, and it's just insane super insane i don't get it like are we really live in a clown world i mean yeah. i thought that was a joke at first but that's how we live it makes no sense ddm thanks for joining us man what's up, man? Oh, hey what's up DDM? DDM. i mean you... i uh go ahead guys hey tuna did you hear about sorry did you hear did you... Oops, tuna, sorry, the, sorry. Um, the recent survey in the uk found that 77 percent of people in the uk are scared to speak out yeah, insane. Seventy-seven yeah, percent of UK so people are scared Scotland, to speak yeah, out. Scotland, Scotland's a day away so, from you know, you know, being put in prison for you know, oh, he, oh. being in your own house and saying something. Yeah, oh, it doesn't gotcha. surprise me at all. Speaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's amazing. Oh God, this very, guy. <laughs> right? Yeah, no. <laughs> it's really frightening to think that seventy percent of the populace of anywhere would be scared to speak out because if that 70 all flip the switch at the same time, they could flip it all back. And you know what I'm saying? It's just a matter of, of lighting that match, so to speak. So last week we had a little thing we talked about, I could, was it last week or the week before? I think it was last week. And we talked about what they did to you guys' flag yeah, um, last week. So a little, I saw this and as an, a little addendum, yep. um, That's cool. I wanted to uh, show anybody that hadn't seen this. So let's see how long is it? One seven. Yeah, I haven't seen this. Hi, Benji here. And this is why the Union Jack flag makes me feel uncomfortable as a black brat. Because of the coronation of King Charles this week, the UK flag is everywhere at the moment. And I am a proud Brit. Is everywhere at the moment. You can't, Despite you this can't nation's be, history you, and many... Hold that for two seconds. You can't be. It's a contradiction. You can't say that you're a proud Brit when you're about to say how scared you're of a fucking flag. Stop, like, is. Right. Yeah. Do you really fucking think that most of the English people even like goddamn Charles Windsor? Fuck no. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just, it's but you not. know, if you're a patriotic Britain, it doesn't fucking matter because it's your king. I get it. You know, I mean, as much as I can understand as American, but like I understand it. And those people don't see that. It's like, hey, I, I don't know that anybody thinks he's the fucking greatest thing ever, but he's the king. That's who it is. And that's that's how the shit's been for a thousand years. And pussies like this just want to fuck it up. <laughs> right problems but i do find any displays of patriotism that include the union jack or the st george's cross the england flag kind of distressing and from my experience this isn't an uncommon feeling amongst marginalized racial and ethnic groups okay. in the uk a key reason yeah you know you know what the solution is then don't you if it's too scary here get out get out, out. there's I mean, the door the boat there's the door to get here there's the door <laughs> oh my don't let it hit you in the ass on the way to the boat. But that's like, hey, a boat got you here. Maybe another one gets you back home as we continue. The reason for this is the extent to which racist and xenophobic far-right individuals and groups use this flag to disguise their bigotry as patriotic pride. If I had a pound for every time someone was racist towards me online who had the Union Jack in their bio, I'd be pretty wealthy. The but that is... Uh according to whatever crazy rules this guy uses to define uh, racism. Flag is also a common symbol of British nationalism, <laughs> which is often unkind and threatening to racial and ethnic minorities here. It's, it's also a reminder of Britain's dark colonial history. I'm not saying that the flag is inherently racist or xenophobic or that. 
Dude, you just spent the last fucking minute saying the same thing. It's even insensitive to fly the flag with sincere feelings of pride. But it's important to recognize that many of us have an uncomfortable, painful relationship with patriotic imagery. And that doesn't make us any less British. Have that helps. Bye. You know what my pain is with my country's patriotic? What I see is that other people are stopping to have patriotism. Motherfuck. What do you guys think? Shit. What's been said already, you know? What a dumbass. Yeah. Right, right. It's just like, you know, all these people are offended. It's like, yeah, because you told them to be. Right. Yeah. There's, I mean, they're they're just trying to, they're trying to give it away. Go ahead, Gobster. What would you say? Yeah, it's clicks and likes. This is all Mm -hmm. he's doing it for. Clicks and likes. Yeah, it's clicks and likes. He's just doing that. Clicks and likes. He's doing that because he thinks he's funny. Look, the simple truth of the matter is, you cannot be a proud Brit if you do not recognise the uh, uh, Union flag. You can't be a proud Englishman if you don't rec- recognise the Cross of St George. Every country has a flag. So what you're saying is you're against... Because he said, I'm against patriotic symbols. Well, that means he's against every single flag ever made for every single country. So why doesn't he just go and it's not, is it? it's float off in a dinghy in the middle of the Pacific Ocean then? Yeah. They'd be happy. Right. Oh, it's your dark colonial past. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to be like, you know, to break this to you, mate, but if it wasn't for our dark colonial past, most of you lot would still be living in mud huts. Most of you wouldn't have railways. Most of you wouldn't have buildings. Most of you wouldn't have sewer systems. You wouldn't have an education system. You wouldn't have a law system. You wouldn't even have roads. To Don't get me wrong. Though. We did lots of bad right. things in the past, but so has every single country in the, the world. No country yeah, hasn't got blood on their hands. And as Elon Musk said, we're we're being like, honest, like, yeah, Elon Musk said, we've all been a slave once. Yeah. Go on. All right. Look at look at the Irish slaves. No, you they rage. Bring oh, up God, an Irish lie, slave and they'll lose it. Well, what I was going to say is that you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we you know the, the British Empire brought certain things to other countries, which then these people then destroyed and fucking set fire to, and now they're clambering back to us because their countries are fucking shitholes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, ours are going to be so ruined. They're going to exactly. go back to a better country that they came from. <laughs> I just Hell. right. It makes my blood boil. It does. It makes my blood boil because it does. If you don't like it, go. Right. It's as simple as that. If you don't like it, go away. Oh God, is see this wouldn't happen <laughs> if it's my supermarket. I'd twat him. I'd walk over now, and punch his lights out. Someone has already. Genuinely I genuinely would. But rip that flag off, shove it up his ass, and smack him on. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, if you're just tuning in, yeah, 77%. Right, right. If you're just tuning in, uh, you are watching the Culture Council, yeah. and we're talking about a little bit of everything right now. Uh, we're, I'm about to show you some people protesting in a store, and then later we got a little bit of video games, a little bit of BBC, Doctor Who type news stuff too. But I appreciate everybody watching. Wow. I appreciate the numbers. I wish everybody would uh, be sure and like, subscribe, share. And if you'll hit the link in the chat for the, the people on X, if you'll, you'll find a link in the chat over here to YouTube, come over and um, subscribe. I've already gotten some new subscribers. Really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the links in the description over here on YouTube and you'll get all of our guests and uh, uh, Culture Council members, all of us. So. We really appreciate you guys. Damn, y'all been supporting us heavy every week, and I really appreciate it. It makes this fun. Hell yeah, thank you very much, guys. We have to yeah, talk about you. horrible things. So on that, here's something that bothers me, okay? Um, this just, all right, this let me show it. I just don't, it doesn't, I mean, it makes sense, like, somewhat, but then when you think about it, it's so stupid. But watch this. This is a cost of our announcement. This evening, BBS Belfast is in Sainsbury's Kennedy Center in Belfast. The reason we're here this evening is to make people aware that there's really products that are being sold in this store. Really I forgot this was in Ireland. New products go towards the genocide in Palestine. They go towards oh, the forced yeah. starvation of men, women, and children who are down this moment. That's why we're making this protest. We appeal to people. Jesus Christ, look there. Okay, so you got him. He's got a megaphone inside of a store. Um, you got dipshit here got the flag nonces the flag nonces are out in force behind them yeah there's there's noncery afoot man and then you got this moron but like this one he's got it in the shopping cart i just think that's really i find that 
even more asinine. Uh, it's asinine icing Here's on top of do. asinine cake. Right? We get a helicopter for these four or five people. We round them up. Here you go, boys. No, no, it's okay. Don't get upset, guys, because, you know, you're really passionate about this. In the fucking helicopter you go, right? Let's get you over to Gaza. Hey. Out you go, boys. Yep. What, now, what here you go. You? Problem solved. What even right. arm you? We'll give you good equipment. I mean, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> can take care of that. The oh, UN oh, oh, can oh, take care of that. No equipment. That's true. No that's equipment true. for them. But they're scum. Absolute scum. But they're, they're in reality, well, they've got well, no well. idea what they're talking about. They've got mm -hmm. no right. idea what they're talking about. It's I'll just they've got. Go on, carry on. Play the rest of it. Not to buy in the Israeli genocide. Not to buy in the Sainsbury's selling Israeli products in the store. We also opened the Sainsbury's to remove these products from their store. We opened it this evening and we'll be appealing to them to keep them off the shelves. Thank you. Is this a no. store you guys are familiar with or is this an Irish thing? Oh, no. It, yeah, we've se I've seen several other things. I've heard of things. I mean, there's different variations. Just a little, same. Yeah, mm. just a little story. Great. As I was coming back off my holiday and I was driving up the M5 back up to Midlands. In the pouring rain on the bridge, one of the bridges, there was a guy holding a Palestine flag, the free <laughs> Palestine, on the motorway bridge. Yeah. Oh my Fortunately God. for him, at 75 miles an hour, sorry, 70 miles an hour, I wasn't speeding. Sorry, officer. <laughs> um, he didn't hear me shout while I shouted out the window at him, stupid knobhead. I mean, they, what is the point yeah. in doing that? There's no, the thing is, Israeli products are being sold on the shelves. Let's tear them off. Let's do this. Let's do this. I mean, they're putting pressure on the guy who might be James Bond because half of his family is really, really <laughs> just gets a grip. It's right. got nothing to do with you. And if you're that passionate, get on a plane, piss off over there and do something about it. But they won't. Right, right. Yeah, you call cowards. Them and they won't. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's somebody, my... I mean, sorry, sorry, mate. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead man. No, I was like, where's the store security? No if shit. I was the security right. officer, I'd be in their face and say, tell you what, guys, here's an idea. Fuck off. Get I out of my store. I exactly agree, you know, where the security is, but knowing retail um, a little well, the problem is a lot of supermarkets, apart from some of the bigger, bigger stores, they don't have security 24-7. There's only in nah. times where there's more of a heat map of things being kind of stolen. Um well, and even if you did have a security guard, chances yeah. are, what what are they going to do? You know, if they do anything, they're going to get arrested for bullshittery. But that, that's that's what they count on. This is the problem. Yeah. This is yeah. what they count on, is the fact that no one will get involved. You see, now, if I was there, I'd have got involved. If I got arrested, so what? So be it. Because well, me my first is, time. <laughs> yeah, it, well, yeah. The thing is, you could, they're, they're being allowed to get away with this. It's just like a child. If your child misbehaves, you let them get away with it, they'll do a bit more and a bit more and a bit more right. until you, right. you know, you've got to come down with a hard hammer and say, this is not acceptable. You can't do this. Get gone. But obviously the problem is here in the UK, the people you call are the police who aren't interested if they could turn up. And to be fair to them, I'm not going to knock the police in the UK. There's not enough of them. There really isn't enough of them. But the simple right. truth remains, they're not going to turn up. And then, you know, and what's creating news, this, you remember we were talking last week about vacuums. When you leave a vacuum, it will get to mm. vigilante law. Sooner or later, this is going to happen, and it's going to kick off really badly, and some people are going to oh, yeah. get really hurt. Yeah. And then yeah. whose fault will it be? You see, this is Oh, the they'll problem. blame it on us. Well, yeah, that's the thing. You know, we, we see the MPs on social media, which is driving me. I'm debating whether actually to break my rule and block them, because... You know, Zara Sultana, you know, one of these oh. fucking idiots, day in, day out, talking about anything to do with Gaza, nothing to do with her fucking job, you know? Yep. And when you've got the MPs banging on about it, you know, I, I can understand why people feel that they can't say anything because your MPs are going on about it. You know, you've got businesses going on about it. You know, you've got police kind of ignoring kind of these protests and stuff going on, you know? People would feel very foolish to try and get involved because if your MPs are talking about it, they're they're making everything okay, and that's the problem. Yeah. You know, MPs yeah, should not be allowed to do this. That is, that right. is the biggest problem. Yeah, the biggest problem well, we have. Well, what I was going to say is that's that's like a perfect example of spreading this woke mind virus. Why has nobody stopped him? That's the perfect example. Get in there, tell him, look, I see that's your problem. I see you don't like it, but I don't care. It has nothing yeah. to do with me. Go get you a little park group and go yell at each other about it because nobody else gives a shit. You know what I mean? Yep. Get out of here. That's a perfect example that's how they spread it and then people will hear it and 
people that can't think for themselves. There it goes, man. Completely agree. Mm -hmm. Sheila, completely agree. Thank you for joining us, by yeah. the way. Hey, Sheila. Absolutely. <clears throat> it's absolutely, it's absolutely, it's true. I mean, the thing is, I don't know where this is going to end. Well, actually, no, I do know where this is going to end. And when it's going to end, it's somewhere that, to be fair, I hope none of you ever have to go to. Because when it ends up in violence, violence is not going to be good. And I was watching, I don't know if any of you watch Angry Bootneck. Have you ever watched any no, of those videos? Uh -uh, he's, an ex yeah, he's an ex-Royal Marine commando. He's a bit like oh, Paz 49. Um, and he's actually turned around and said, you know, when because was, he was showing the clip of that guy in London who was stabbing that bloke on the train. Um, oh, yeah. And, and he said, the problem is, is when people say violence doesn't solve anything, no, violence does solve things. If you've looked through history, it's violence that's forced people to go to the table to sit down and talk to solve the problem. He said, right, and the thing is, right. you, can't, you can't say to this guy, please don't stab me, it hurts. He's not going to listen. Yeah, The only way it's going to stop him is if you hit him back. That's the only right. solution to the problem. I mean, here in, and here in the UK, we're screwed because we, we're not – our police are barely armed. We have very, very right. limited firearms to uh, – uh, so, uh, police, sorry – of which a lot have left after one of them got acu uh, accused of murdering somebody when it was a clean, perfect shot as far as I was concerned. Mm. Right. Uh, so we don't have that. So what we have now is we have police who are adverse to conflict. You see, when, when, when it's like when a soldier and the police, their job is to get in between the bad guy and the public. Right. Your job is to run towards trouble, not away from it. And the moment we've got the moment exactly. is we've got police who are running away, police who are yeah. not getting in the way. As a soldier, oh, yeah. if I was on, if I was on you in duty and it kicked off saying Cyprus, my job was to stand in between the innocent people and the people who are causing the problem. And if that meant I took bricks and petrol bombs and God knows what else, that was my bloody job, and I did it. So right. this is the, we, we're living in a world, especially here in the UK, we're living in a, a world where everybody's been. Forced to cower in, in, in and and shrink away, and then if you do speak out, I mean, like myself, I know full well. Eventually, they're going to shut my YouTube channel down, mm -hmm. and eventually, the laws that are in Scotland will come to the U come yeah. to England, yeah. and I'm already waiting for my arrest because it will happen because they are shutting down the people's ability to speak out, and it's wrong. oh yeah, it's wrong. It's happening I mean, here. Yeah, well, yeah, but at least in America, you have got a gun. You can defend yourself. I, I, I can reach see. down and grab mine right now. Me <laughs> too. Yeah, I don't turn around, yeah. Well, all I can do is run upstairs and get my baseball bat, and if I That's do hit horrible, somebody, man. yeah, but if I do hit somebody with it, I will be arrested with, uh, with a weapon with intent, even if it's defending my own house. Yeah, I will be arrested for assaulting a burglar. There are That's some US states like that, though, aren't there? To be fair, yeah. there are a couple of US states where. You know... uh, yes, but um, it tends to it tends to sometimes get more on the state and local level. Um, like uh, I'm sure there's probably a vast disparity between where I live in, uh, in North Carolina and then three thousand miles away where Thrash is in Cali. Um, and Cali's got probably a lot more stringent gun laws. I live in a state now where. Um, I don't even have to get, I don't even have to go get a permit for a, um, handgun or anything anymore. I just go straight to where I'm buying it and they'll just right. run some stuff right there. I mean, like they've removed steps. They've made it easier for us in my state to get guns. Right. And so like, I give you two things. Um, if you, like I ordered, uh, um, I ordered a, uh, 45, like a world war two or a 45. And when I went to have it delivered to me, it showed you depending on what state you were in, if there were some sort of restrictions, like you can't have this or you can't have that. Right. North Carolina basically had none. And then I pulled up places like New York and California and it was like, <laughs> so it, uh, it varies oh, yeah. vastly. I don't know what it's like where you are thrash, but it just depends on where you are. Oh man, uh, right here, you ain't going nowhere until you have your concealed carry. They make you do a huge test. You got to wait so long just to get it. It's really a pain. It's a yeah. it's a super pain. Yes, yeah, so I we mean, have open carry here. Right. Technically, technically it's my wife's because I'm not allowed to have one anymore. But hey, the, there's no way in today's day we are I do there's no way you can't protect right, yourself. You, you can't. Oh you shit. Yeah, if you if you if you can get it, you gotta get it, man. Oh um, yeah. I'm that's Molly, I, Go ahead, man. Sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. 
Well, I was just going to say, I just feel so bad for the guys over in the UK. That's just oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 100% yeah. not fair. They should be able to grab and just, you ain't coming to my house. You ain't throwing shit at my house. You ain't going to yell that crap at me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm you got nothing. What, am, what are you going to do? Throw rocks at them? It sucks. Yeah, but it's, what it's, we could turn around and say is in the UK, uh, guns are banned here. Okay, you, right. you can't have a firearm. I mean, if you buy an airsoft rifle, you have to have uh, a license to carry that as well. No if shit. You're stopped, yeah, because wow. if you're stopped, you, if you're stopped going to an airsoft meet, you have to have a, a a pass to show the police, and you have to declare that you're carrying airsoft weapons in the boots mm. of your car. I mean, you, you know, you can't, you can't. But we don't have gu- we we have no guns. Really. Well, really face that, we don't have any guns. The bad guys, of course, always have guns. I mean, shootings right. are quite regular here yeah, because. Some other reason they don't understand that if you ban something, that doesn't stop bad guys from getting them. But here, what we have here is the fact that we don't have guns, so all they're doing is running around stabbing each other. We have mm-hmm. a massive knife crime. Oops, issue so, um, Archer's, Archer's just dropped a relevant comment. I've just kind of brought up for you. Let me oh, read. Yes, that. exactly. That's true, though, isn't it? It's the same in America. Well, oh, well, bang guns. Yeah, but what uh, about we- the bad guys? Oh, they'll abide by the yeah, laws. But they're, they're, they're banned. That, right. that stops they're everything, banned? doesn't it? Right. Please don't oh, shoot okay. me with that banned firearm that I, you shouldn't have because they're banned and I can't have any more. So you can shoot me and rob me, and I have no option of defending myself. Yeah. Well, look, look at Chicago. Most gun oh, laws you can think of, and it's the worst place. I mean, I used to live out there, and we had to leave. Uh, uh-uh. It's fucking uh, Chirac. I mean, Chicago is fucked. And shout out to oh, the yeah. people that got to live in that shit. But I mean, oh, like, right, the, law, right. the laws favor the criminals over in the same way in New York, LA, places, San Francisco, all the big cities are taken over by a certain side of things and they fuck up everything they touch. You know, not that the right doesn't, they just fuck it up slower. But yeah. I mean, right. uh, yeah. the, and, and what Archer said was kind of something I've thought about too. Is like, well, yeah, um, you would think at least the criminals wouldn't have them. Uh, I wish that were the case, like what you guys are talking about. But yeah, if they can smuggle people in, they can smuggle guns in with the people too. Easily. Exactly. Um, oh, and yeah. then the thing that pisses me off is like that no cash bail and like people just doing horrible things. Like they had that one kid that actually, sh- he didn't, I don't think he ended up hitting or killing anybody. I want to say it was in Texas, a fella uh, shot up his high school and he ended up getting out on bail like the next fucking day or something. And, and it's just like, what? What I mean, it's 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 incentivizing and encourage worse shit. So on that exact same topic, I got you know we used to we would look at little funny clips like this, and I've got one a little culture council throw. I'm a medieval reenactor, and some of these bands are closing in on us regarding swords and the like. That doesn't surprise oh, me. The minute you start, yeah. if go ahead. If labor, hold on, before we go any further, if labor get in, that's how they're going to solve knife crime in the United Kingdom. They're going to ban swords God, because we man. all. Because we because we all walk around with broadswords, yeah, well, we just bad guys. <laughs> yeah, just criminals, not you guys. They're medieval on their asses, and that's yeah, but, uh, we, it's, but the thing is, as as uh, uh, Archer Collins said, we have here in like that you do in the US. We have historical reenactments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you have your civil war reenactments and stuff. Yeah, right, that would right. be like them outlawing muskets over here. Yes, and, and, exactly. You, know, right. you hear it coming a mile away, can't you? But we're just doing it for your own protection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I've never. Oh, no, yeah, offense, yeah. no offense, Tune. Have you seen anyone walking down the whole street carrying a broadsword? I mean, no, come on. I've seen, um, I I've think seen we should see more. In London hacking away at people. Oh yeah, but they're, they're not broadswords, are they? Or that you know, I, I mean, I, that, I, that, it how, could be how, some of the size of these bastards. Oh well, no, some of these not so see so-called knives. Mm. Jesus, mm. <laughs> you I thought think... Rambo had a big knife? God, That's not a knife. There's some That's not local... a knife. <laughs> there's some local like ordinances and things here it can get really into the minutia on the local level like your local sheriff's department tends to have a, a, a fair amount to do with how we get guns things like that and town ordinances but for the most part you walk around with a fucking sword as far as i know pretty much anywhere except in probably certain cities they'll have an ordinance about blades but uh, a lot of times there'll be some sort of workaround for for reenacting or some shit written in the law, I believe. So, I mean, you know, I think people need to go back to carrying a fucking sword. I think it'd be cool as shit. I'd go around carrying one of them shorter ones, like a goddamn Gladius or a shorter Roman sword, some shit. But I mean, like, uh, or a fucking samurai sword. But I think, you know, it, it's like, think about it. Like back in the day, that's something they wouldn't have allowed peasants to have a sword in like, say, uh, medieval or, you know, um, Feudal, I mean, that was the word I was thinking of, like feudal times. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure they wouldn't have let peasants have swords and shit then either. 
And uh, I mean, that really means they're trying to fuck with you because they know, they know the criminals got that shit and they know that they're going to have it no matter what the laws are. I just, I, I just, just, the thing is what's going through their mind, Gobster. I'll ask you that. Do you think, are they conscious of this evil that they're perpetrating or do they really, are they fully believing yeah. that they're doing something good? What do you think? Or is it a mix of the two? No, they know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. I mean, here in London, there's going to be a Lord Mayor election where mm-hmm. Sadiq Khan uh, is going to win because he's made sure that he's filled his city uh, full of people who will vote for him. Yeah. Okay. We, we've right. had um, we've had the Conservatives who have destroyed the British military to such a level that we are now completely useless. Here in the UK, I don't yeah, when I was in the armed forces, you couldn't have a beard. Okay. You were not allowed to have a beard. You right. had to have, the only thing you could grow was a mustache. Because when you put your respirator on, if you had a beard, it would break the seal and it would be pointless. Guess what they're bringing back now? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you can have a beard. Why is that? Oh, no, but we know why. Because there's certain religions that insist that they grow facial hair. So now they've actually gone with the patronizing line of, we've listened to you. Beards are back. Like, it's a good thing. We know why. Hey, no but- offense. Oh, yeah. They're gonna kill some people. That shit, man. Yeah, but no offense. No, I'm not going. I'm not going. You know, it's to be fair. If I was in combat and I had four guys with beards who I knew what they got beards for, they would always be in front of me. They'd never be behind me because I couldn't trust them. Right. You know, we have we have an advert to the British Army where they're out on patrol, a combat patrol, and they stop. I've seen it. So the yep. one Muslim can do his prayer in the middle of a trail. Bollocks. Mm. Absolutely, yeah, we're about that, yeah. yeah, yeah absolutely. In a combat situation, oh, it's okay, guys. It's we're sorry, feeling... stop. Oh, my army has got to smack out a prayer before we can we're do any more combat our forces, or at least the army, right. anyway, with people that won't defend you know, the British ideals. They'll it, gladly it drag you your ass out of your you may house. Well just not recruit these people. You know, you're just wasting money because when it comes to it, let's be honest, any kind of major kind of infraction is going to be against one of these lovely kind of bomb wielding countries. They're gonna. They're not gonna fucking shoot kind of their own, are they? No. Mm. No. I mean, even those. I mean, it's like now you join you here in the UK. Um, back when when I joined, I went into a recruitment office. We had them all over the towns, and you went in there, and there'd be two or three serving soldiers. They'd all be sat there, and you go in and say, "I want to join the army," and they'd sit there and lie through their teeth and tell you how wonderful it was going to be. <laughs> Did they come to your schools? Right? Yeah. Huh? Did they re- did they recruit in your uh, you call it secondary school but like in our high schools they came to my high school like and tried to recruit people oh yeah you 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 would get year. you would get what yeah you yeah, get them pay I a visit. Okay. but I mean I left school walked straight into I literally left school walked straight into a recruitment office mm-hmm. uh, and at uh, sixteen and three quarter well I was sixteen actually uh, and I said I want to join you know the army I want to join the military um um I had to do a, a, a nearly a year in a lot, what they call cadets, obviously, because mm-hmm. I wasn't old enough to join. Uh, but when you go in there, it used to be it's serving soldiers who would, if you asked them a question, would tell you exactly what you were going to go up against. They'd explain things to you, and then you joined. Now we have a company, I think it's called Capita, which is a private company, who have people asking you questions who have no idea what a soldier does, mm-hmm. have no idea what an air, an air, pilot, you know, an air force guy does, no idea what a Navy guy does. And then when you fill in the form, once you're accepted, they can make you wait up to a year to mm-hmm. actually get onto into you know into your training regiment. How's that work? I mean, if we're that desperate for troops, you should be. I mean, when yeah. I went in, it was I was in, and it was seven weeks from the minute I said I wanted to join. I was actually at you know in seven weeks to do you know. And so I don't understand it. I just don't get the that what they've done is I know why they've done it. They've done it. To destroy the military, we have no military now. We have no they, military. They have I to mean, replace it with something they can turn on you, which is exactly no, well, what they're well, doing. Exactly. Right. Or, I mean, they're going to keep dropping. I mean, they've dropped the recruit the things. Like, I mean, like in the police, your fitness requirement is no longer required. Mm, so yeah, now what we got yeah. is little short, fat ass assholes who are pretending to be coppers who literally can't catch anyone. No. Right. I mean, even me, yeah. and I'm over, and I'm over uh, overweight. But I mean, I can outrun most coppers now. It's like right. 
that's if they turn up and then they're going to drop it in the military. They're going to drop the requirement and they'll get, because they're that desperate, they'll drop it and drop it and drop it and drop it. And the problem mm. is, is then you're going to get people who don't want to defend our country and are infiltrating into the military. And you're right. going to get people who are just not physically capable of doing the job. You know, being a soldier is a bloody hard physical drag. I mean, you know, uh, past 49, I'll tell you, after a bit, your knees are screwed, your back's screwed. It's yeah, like being a professional bit. athlete, I would say, yeah. if not more, oh, yeah. more right. than that. I mean, Obviously, more than that. I know it's more important. I'm just saying it's yeah, but my, my back and my knee, My back and my knees are shot to crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're having to carry 40, 50 pounds of kit over rough terrain all the time. Right. Yeah? It's not, it's not a job for the physically weak. It's also not the job for people who haven't got the mental capacity to deal with what they're getting. Yeah? What you need is, I mean, there's, I don't know where you've seen it here. There's a UK, there's a big sheet which actually lists all the things how people are, like if they like slight right wing and this, that, and the other. So basically, they can weed out right wingers and get rid of them out of the army. That is the sheet that should be the requirement to be a soldier. Right. Because you have to right. be mental, you have to be aggressive, <laughs> you have to be strong. You know, you have to be, you, no offense, in a firefight, you don't want somebody who's going to be sitting there moaning about their pronouns right. <laughs> or he's been a bit harsh to me. You want somebody who you're going to go, those are the bad guys, go kill them. And that's what you do, you know, without right. hesitation. But if you drop the recruitment level down, you're going to get a bunch of people who are, who are going to panic and freeze in combat. And then they're mm. going to die and they're right. going to die in their hundreds. And it's, we are being, we here in the UK, we are being replaced from the inside out, and it's oh, being yeah. done on purpose. Our governments, irrespective of whether they're Labour or whether they're Conservative, because there's the only two parties like Democrat and Republican, their sole purpose at the moment in the US, Democrats, you're like, is Biden's allowing your borders to be flooded because he's importing his voters, Democrat exactly. voters. Here in the UK, they're flooding us with immigrants because they'll always vote for Labour. They always have done, always will do. They yeah. are destroying our countries. <laughs> oh, yeah. All the West. The West is being destroyed from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're doing the same shit here. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. Go on, mate. Go go for it, oh, mate. I was just going to say, I'll tell you, because, I mean, back in the day, I used to I used to be a troublemaker. So I've been, I've been to, I just call oh, it yeah. grown-up camp. You know what I mean? Yeah, kind of <laughs> and I remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so... So uh, when you, they, they put you in this thing called R and R, which is receive and release, and they literally just cram you in these little cages. You know what I mean? And the first time I did it, I was like, "What is this?" And the dude next to me, who's done a lot of terms, he was like, "Check this out, dude. Wait, nothing but cattle. That's all we are. All we are is cattle on the inside and on the outside. And if we start disagreeing with what they're doing, all they're gonna do is put in something so that they can just make it easier to push us out and do what they got to do. That's all we are to these people. We ain't nothing else. They don't care if they kill our freaking kids. No they don't reason. care any of it. Yeah, no. All we are is just, just we're just livestock. That's it. And if we can't provide them with something, then we gotta go." That's exactly yeah. how the freaking. That's exactly how They're they the are. Carbon they want to reduce. Yeah, we are right. the carbon yeah. they want to reduce. So, I mean, oh, yeah, we we sorry. yeah. So it was like in '91 when we went to the Gulf and we had the briefing before we went and uh, engaged in the land campaign. And mm. our commanding officer came out and said, you know, showed us what we're going to do on the old thing. And he turned around and he said, "Gentlemen, I expect not to be able to speak to half of you tomorrow. Talk about sobering. Yeah, no shit." Boy. Yeah, but you know what? We all knew that. We still got in our vehicles. Yeah. We still did the shit. <clears throat> right. So that's what you need in the military. And now we've yeah. raised a generation of kids that can't fathom working a fucking eight hour shift. So how are we well, going to get them? They, don't, they <laughs> are confused. They're doing it on purpose. In education, they, can, they tell them they're the greatest thing ever. Uh, you always get participation trophies. It doesn't matter if you lose. Mm -hmm. You can be whatever you want to be. You can be called whatever pronoun you want to be with. Oh, let's question your sexuality. Let's well, confuse the living crap out of you before you even leave school. can't identify the 275-pound woman. Yeah, no. like a boy. Yes, exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> and that brings us back to that video, and that shows the hypocrisy that. of it all. The, it mm -hmm. just, yeah. the massive hypocrisy of, it, of, of everything that's going on. You know, they're the people who, they were the people who probably, those people probably wear Palestine flags and go for a walk every Saturday. Yeah. No shit. Don't like it when it's thrown right. back at them. And this is the world <laughs> we live in. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, they want us weak. That's all that. That's all that's about. They want us weak. They don't want you to fight back. So will you throw them in a dress? We can we can push you in a dress any way we want. But that right. guy sitting on his porch, freaking smoking a J with a freaking hammerless three fifty seven next to him. Watch right. out! You know what I mean. Yeah, we we can't mess with that dude. Amen. So, Amen. Yeah, right. we Amen. want we want as less of those as we can get, and that's what they're trying to do right now. So and uh, I tell, oh, go ahead, go I'm gonna have to get. Mm, yeah, oh, go ahead, man. Sorry, man. Oh no, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say that's that that's you. They'll never get rid of me. You know what I mean? They're gonna have to do what they got to do because uh, I ain't that dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, exactly. Amen. I know what you mean. Man. Amen to that. So, uh, shout out to everybody watching, man. We got people oh, watching yeah, thanks on, very much for these 40 uh, people. on yeah, thank you. Uh, tune in my ex uh, says over here, 35 people, I think. So we're closing in on 40. Appreciate everybody watching. If you're watching on X or somewhere, come over here and subscribe. Uh, at, it's at Culture Papa on YouTube. And if you're on X, there's a link inside the descriptions. Come over, subscribe, and hit the other YouTube channel links in the description. Appreciate everybody watching. We're getting ready to get into two different things. I've got a 13-second funny video that's kind of tied in. And then after that, we're going to look at some boobs. Everybody boobs. boobs. <laughs> yeah. Titties. The culture yeah, council titties. gives you what you want. You want. You said you wanted titties. Tuna found us some. We got them. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Thank you, and gentlemen. First, being a bunch of uh, male pigs, uh, uh, the other thing we like, the other effing we like probably the most is fighting. And this shit cracked me up when I saw it, man. Uh, this is like you see sometimes like these people in these convenience stores, and I assume they look much similar, uh, you know, in the West, probably look similar over there, too. And uh, and they'll be and these people are getting more emboldened to fuck with people like what we're talking about. And they're especially fucking with these store owners. But most of the time. Uh, and I know it's, I don't mean to be prejudiced or cliche, but a lot of times foreign people end up owning these stores, right? And they don't fuck around, <laughs> they, you know? So we're going to get to see an example of that. It's pretty funny. Let's see if I can bring it up well. Bear with me one second. All right, here we go. <laughs> get out of here, boy. <laughs> Don't touch me. Oh, yeah, we got to watch it one more time. That sound, that sounds that amazing. That sounds so good. Here he comes. Yeah. That's the sound of the dream. Right there, boys. And, man, anybody that's ever been clocked real good in the head, it, once, once you get hit real good in your head, you're fucked, man. You just kind of get bet- stupid. Oh, I've actually had that happen to me. I got, I got a big scar and, and seven staples to prove it, man. I do. Oh, I you guess what? Broke one over your head. Shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was getting jumped. Guess what? Because I'm in South Central LA and I'm a white guy. But you can't be racist yeah. to white people. You know what no, I mean? No, you know, oh, yeah. I had to fight three dudes off. That the, as, soon as, I, as soon as I turned around, boom, took them one crack. That is crazy, man. But oh, yeah, uh, at least some people won't put up with that shit. That was funny as hell. But that's what yeah, was exactly that's what made me laugh was that tink. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Now I got something better. All right. So two <sighs> it is, I just it's, thought it, it's better, isn't it? But the actual the story behind it is no. just oh so I know. Bad. Dirty window, but the sun oh, we don't <sighs> really hear anything. Please make that bigger. This, copyright bigger Jesus. Yeah, Come so on, bigger on the screen. Back. That's better. There you go. Oh, yeah. You wanted boobs. We fucking give it to you. Oh, my God. She's beautiful. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, shit. If my wife's watching this, I love you, baby. I hope you guys are enjoying the concert and everything this evening. Love you. Yeah, yeah. You're my all of our wives, but there's nothing yeah. wrong with this. <laughs> yeah, actually, my wife's cool. She's not like like that. Um, Thank God. But, uh, oh, same. So Mine's actually this- hanging out right here. Hey, shout nope. out to Mrs. Potato. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Trash and Mrs. Potato. Yes. Shout out, shout out. We like your hubby. All right, so. Don't, we don't got, stop. Uh, just keep it on loop. Just keep it on loop. It's fine. Oh, oh, I can, oh I you've stopped it now. It's okay. I'll still leave it up a little bit. We've got to get to the No, You story. put the dude with the megaphone back doing? in there. You ruined it. <laughs> Sorry, I got away from the boobs, guys. I didn't mean to. There we go. The Irish protesters. So mm-hmm. it says, uh, this is what this guy posted this, uh, Dom Lucra. It said developing. Mm. Good account. So, you should follow it if you don't. There's some really good stuff on that. Yeah, he's yeah, got he's a good, good, he's got a good, he's uh, good. Page. Yeah, yeah, he's great. 
some fans of the glad gay and lesbian I can't remember yeah, what it's some some, yeah, some random alliance shit. or some bullshit. Uh, but it's gay and lesbian alliance, something media awards, and they have an awards for, for just for people who this awards is for guys that like sucking dick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this these awards are for women like scissoring, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you stop and think about it, how fucked up is that? Why should we have awards just for gay shit? Or well, for the just awards, for I think, shit? more more specifically, uh, be the the awards are for flat chested fat fucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with a five o'clock shadow. No way of ever looking like this, and they're just jealous as fuck. That's and all then, it is, jealousy. They will never look like this, dude. Uh, especially if you're yep. dude, you got something swinging. It's not happening, dude. All right, I gotta find out if they're real or not. Let's see. R and let's see. R Sydney. I can never spell her name right. Sweeney's boobs. Hey, the, the wise are up here. Yeah. <laughs> are, are Sydney Sweeney's or Sydney Sweeney? They look real. Uh, yeah, I they think they are. I think they're just pushed they up in that real. outfit. Mm. Oh, I heard they were real. They look real good. At least now we know Joe's real. next appointment. Yeah, yeah. Joe was at the <laughs> Joe was covering at the Glad Awards. Yeah, that was his job. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Joe Benoli at Joe Benoli on YouTube. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, we'll be enjoying uh, your we weekend, man. In, in IRL, he's got something going on. He had an emergency, so we're thinking about you, buddy. But uh, yeah. uh, it, it, uh, we hope that the GLAAD Awards are going fine and that you didn't get picked up like when we did that smuggling you in through Mexico's border for that other story. So, mm. Sydney, it says that they're uh, they're real. But here's what it mm. says in this, though. Uh, the funny part of the actual article, if I can get to it. Oh. Some fans of the Glad Media Awards are complaining and claiming that Sydney Sweeney should start covering up after her recent red carpet appearance. Oh, no, she shouldn't. <laughs> oh. But it's not like people who are asking because, like, from for like you know, like a Christian or or, or, or somebody who's or Muslim or somebody who's like religiously offended by it. It's people that are just jealous and trying to push a different. This is the return of, of uh, you know the the movie star. You know, right. like central right. female movie star. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. What have we seen her in? Somebody please enlighten me. Oh, she was in Madam Web. She was in Madam Web. What have we not seen her in? <laughs> you ready, really? Really? She was in Madam Web, and she was supposed to be in a tight suit like Spider Man, and it never happened. And that was the only reason I tuned in to watch the film. I won't lie. Right. So for that film, hoping, hoping. Praying to Lord you know, Jesus. Money, man, I was going to see her in a tight suit. And banking never. on that footage. Yeah, I was banking on it, and it never happened. I was really mm. upset. I was, well, I was, yeah, something on that footage. Yeah. Um, in Canada, they charge you banking. <laughs> they ugly yeah, or I ugly. Agree they did. Yeah. Yeah. I won't lie. They did. You know, did when you look really? at her like that, and you look at her in Madam Web, she was absolutely, well, she's still in there, but she wasn't still in like. Madam Web. Mind you, then you're going, by the time I got halfway through the film, I was thinking about slitting my wrists, to be fair. So anything would have been better than nothing. I mean, it was we'll such a crap film. film. It really was bad. It just uh, makes me think, doesn't it? Kind of, you know, your Marilyn Monroe's, your Audrey Hepburn's, you know, actual female, stars. you know, movie yeah. stars. Not right. the, the, you know, the assholes that we have kind of nowadays, you know. And yeah, this we don't is just kind of the little green monster. It's all it fucking is. Right. Yeah, but Zend yeah, Zendaya is in it, but Zendaya's got no tits. Oh, I'll put it out there. She's as flat as a witch's really is. Just I don't. Yeah, Zendaya seems to be pushing everything, and I'll be honest, mid. She's mid. Mid as fuck. Yeah, but you know why? Mid. We all know why Zendaya's been pushed into things. Because it's, <laughs> see, that's the suit she was supposed to Oh, my God. Look at, look at that. You know what I mean? That's what I was waiting yeah. for. Now That's what left, I was banking on. <laughs> the, the one on the left is what the comics look like. The one on the right is what it actually looked like in the movie. I guess somebody here just did that up. But it's because yeah, of the I mean, Spider-Man problem, wasn't it? Yeah. They, they because yeah, they that, they completely bollocked up the Spider-Man involvement, so they had to lock most of this shit out. Yeah, the they, they, that was they the problem. fucked it. They fucked it up royally, and I don't know, like. I mean, didn't she? She was on Saturday Night Live, wasn't she? And she even made a joke about not being seen in it or, or nobody seeing it or some shit. But uh, I, think, I think everybody who did any press junket for that, Chris, was it Dakota? Dakota Johnson. 
Go on, Johnson. She Johnson. sacked her yeah. agent. She sacked her agent, and she said, "Under no circumstances will I be in this shit ever a fucking again." But I no. think Sydney made a little bit of a little, a more, um, a more gracious kind of comment on that. SNL. Well, I mean, that's probably the better way to go about it because it, yes, but, I was thinking know. grace, mm. Mm. <laughs> grace and beauty, which is something that we're lacking in most kind of forms of media, gaming, movies. I agree. You know, oh, I agree. Yeah, they're destroying gaming. You see that? Oh, oh man, boy. are they? Yeah. Oh, geez. Due to certain members of the BBC, we're all supposed to be purged now. I'm, I'm waiting for me purging. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. oh, Jesus. All those people who think that way should be purged. Oh, right. Okay. So, yeah, okay. Fair that's, that's not a completely frightening, sinister word to use, is it? You know? Right. Not purging. So, I'm waiting to be arrested by in Scotland <laughs> and purged by the BBC for my gaming. Purged by Jules Hardy. Hey, yeah. there ain't going to be nobody at the BBC if they don't quit fucking up. Fucking well, we've got a story. Right? We have got a story yeah. about the BBC, haven't we? Later, so we're going to cover that. Get to that. Yeah, so we're, uh, awesome. we're looking at a story later about uh, their financial woes and some stuff like that. That, uh, that too oh, that'll make, make you happy, there. Gobster. That'll make you really oh, I'm happy. Sure it will. Well, and RTD and was talking about them like, you know, they were already dead, basically. What's up, PD Rich? All right, let's see. Now this, uh, moving on to something else. This is similar because <clears throat> um, uh, Thrash said something about like, what they've done to video games. And I was sent this. And Wait, I wanted you guys to see what they actually said about it first. Hang on. Uh, this is the Joker Rocksteady ordered from AliExpress. <laughs> so I'm assuming this is what he looked like <laughs> in that game. I never say? played it. Yeah, so this is um, this is not the uh, although the Suicide game is in the Arkhamverse, this is not the Arkhamverse Joker because obviously the original Arkhamverse Joker is fucking dead. This right. is the uh, the more oh, sensitive truly. Joker that they they made oh. sure Sweet Baby Ink kind of wrote up for them. No, no. Mm. All they right. should have just called this the Crystal Skull because I don't, I don't even accept this. <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom of the DCs. I agree. I agree, Woodrow. They they made a worse Joker. All right, let's see. Right. What and that was hard going. That was hard going to beat right. Jared Je Leto's Joker. No shit. Here we go. Oh. They're all dead. What a tragedy. What a heartbreaker. The sprays of blood, the smell of singed hair, the viscera. Oh, the viscera. Hey, no, was that tree? Yeah, what wasn't the it? Hell? Uh, was it? That is um, not Joker. Wasn't the, shark, not the, the shark supposed to be gay too? Wasn't King Shark supposed to be gay or something? They're all fucking like gay. It's an SBI yeah, they're all. They're all. Yeah, they're. Gay. Who they is? all want to slap their balls on the backside of the other one's balls. We got they're the last people they straight man gays because they fucking killed him. Spoilers. Sorry. Mm. I right. definitely do it differently this time around. Cleaner. Well, congratulations, Task Force X. It took oh, your. God. Holy shit! Uh, oh, they use this. They use her for everything. She was everything. Like, if you like those Jedi games, fine. I wanted to like them so bad because I wanted to use Force powers, and but I think I'm more like those Force Unleashed. Uh, oh, yeah, I was just gonna say, play Force Unleashed. Right there, you, you go. Fuck shit up. But like, she's in everything now, and Amanda Waller should be fat. <sighs> All of yeah. twenty seconds to lose control of her. Hey, hey, hey! Don't misunderstand me here. It's not the Joker. That's oh. not the Joker. <laughs> Now, Tuna, did you play this? You didn't. I, did, I only oh, played. Did I, uh, shit? I couldn't remember if you played it or not. Uh, I played the the like the alpha. Like I had. I a, saw this coming. I saw this coming a mile away. Right. A mile away. I had to sign some shit, and I couldn't talk about it like until afterwards. Until after the game I came out. Why. No shit. <laughs> and so I uh, I played like the the I guess it was the alpha or like right at pre beta and. I, there were elements to it that you might enjoy for a few seconds. And then within 10 or 15 minutes, it was old and I got stuck somewhere. The visuals were off. I couldn't see shit. It just, it left me with a bad experience. And I thought, well, you know, if maybe they'll fix it, but then the closer we got, the more information came out, we knew it was dog shit. Oh, look how they did his eyes. <laughs> I killed my team because I truly cared oh, God. about them. And even though I've joke. only just gotten to know no. you guys, I care about you that much too. The hell? <laughs> the thing is, the reason why you know the reason why this isn't the Joker is the first thing that an actual you know, variation of the Joker would do. Dare I say it? Is 
beat Harvey Quinn, Harley Quinn, sorry, into a fucking bloody pulp for killing the one person he wants to keep alive, being the bad. Hey, Amen. Oh, yeah, she'd already been dead. Yeah, he would have probably yeah. done that immediately. They'd, so all be dead. They'd all be dead for doing the one thing that he does not want to happen. Exactly. Oh. Um, there's the thing. The woke uh, it's the woke. <laughs> the woke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. It's the woke. I like well, that. Oh, beautiful. That was God perfect. Damn musical comes out for Joker too. Um, oh, don't. Let's Please see the don't. rest of this real quick. Colonel Flag, lock him up. For the record, I hate this. Me too. Yeah, oh, really was awesome. it too much? Making new friends after a move is always tough. Oh, this is much more accommodating than other cells I've been in. Is that real? Sick? You go. Oh, oh, voice as well. I mean, it's not a joke. It's yeah, no effort. Sipa. There, there's sipa. absolutely no effort. They just want to. They just because, especially when Fortnite and stuff came out, they're like, "All right, we can make it low end, make it quick, push it out, and just get some junk and add to it." That's all they tried to do. That's the new video game, whatever. It's ridiculous, and they they'll put no effort in a game anymore, except for RoboCop. RoboCop was great, I thought. You know, but was that was a small independent one, wasn't it for Rogue City? Yeah, and like a double awesome. A game. That Robocop's awesome. Fucking great guy. Mm-hmm. Great guy. I need right. to play because I love the movies, man. I got uh where's Robocop at? I love, <laughs> where's I love Robocop those at? movies. I can remember uh being I should my parents in no way, shape, or form should have let me watch that movie that young. Same. I was probably like yeah, eight same. years old. But I remember them buying the tape when it came out on VHS and going home uh, and watching. I fucking love it. You imagine that. if our parents hadn't let us, you know, if our parents hadn't have done that, you know, what kind of potential um Pussies, we could be. I wonder, because right. there is a, there's a balance, like um, of a, you know, my parents probably maybe should have been a little more on, but I'm, but for me, it worked out fine because I love the shit, you know what I'm saying? But uh, but yeah, I love, I love me some RoboCop. I need to play that game. I just figured, um, I, I said this on Tuna Stream yesterday. I'm so despondent about the gaming industry and stuff right now. I just be, haven't really given much of my money. Don't buy anything no. from big. Don't buy anything from. I'll game wait till it is. Yeah, Wait till GTA 6 things. comes out. Wait till oh, GTA God. 6 comes out. People yeah, are going to be upset. I ain't going to touch that shit. No way. Nope. There's, no no telling, there's no so telling what they're going to do to it, man. I, I mean, oh, no. We all know. We all know exactly what they're going to do to GTA 6. It's going to yep. be so woke. Oh, it's already, yeah. a theme, already a female role. You know, the, the, the player one's going to be female. Uh, all it's right. just... Oh, it's I'm, I'm not great. touching it. Nah, I still play San Andreas. That was probably the pinnacle of Grand Theft Auto. I love Grand Theft Auto. My thing is uh, Red Dead. Is man. Red I is as well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I still play four GTA four all day. I want to play a beat up gangster Russian. I don't want to play some yeah. chick going through yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, problems. I, mean, I like how mm. um, how serious kind of GTA four was compared to the other oh, games. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Agreed. Archer with the yeah, that we're all thinking. That's exactly yeah. what they're going to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Know it. Make it lame and gay. Make it lame yep. and gay, yeah. And diverse. Super diverse. Oh, yeah. And, right. of course, all the evil people will be white people. Yes. All the police yeah. will be white. All the yeah. people yeah. will be white. Men, no? mm. well, they have to be, yeah. Yeah, they oh, have yeah. to be. Oh, to oh yeah. The world, the world hates white people now. You're, oh no, man, no, it's, we, we, we are the we are the spawn of the devil, apparently. Even though apparently, apparently, we seem to be, apparently though, we are actually the uh, messages of the thing Lord. Is, though, without <laughs> dare I say it, I mean, without the uh, you know the horrible white men that back in the day were making games for the C sixty four, the Amstrad, the Spectrum, there would be no fucking gaming industry. You know, right. exactly. Amen. Fucking Amen. insane. Oh, yeah. I mean, I go back further than that. I was I was a ZX eighty. Yeah, Ooh, I, I was playing Horace Go skiing. There you go. Okay. Okay. Horace Go skiing. <laughs> Horace go skiing. Do and you know what? Is. Horace Go skiing is better than Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I can believe it. Probably. I can believe it. Hey. I've just seen it. I can believe it. <laughs> man, I keep I, I, I keep saying, man, I, I do. If anybody wants to get down on some load runner on 64, I'll do a high score freaking comp right now, man. Uh, Screw that yeah, freaking man. Justice League. You know what I mean? Oh yeah! Oh, here we go. This is uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, shout out. We got almost 40 people watching. We really appreciate it. Um, Thank you, everybody. The second most Thank views you, yeah. we've ever had. We appreciate you. If you're watching on X, hit the link in the chat and come over and subscribe on YouTube and then hit the links in the <gasps> description to subscribe. Helps to all the movement. Else. Thank you. Yes, please. It's actually growing and we appreciate everybody helping out with that. Oh, you stupid ass page. Why are you doing this? BBC deficit projected to skyrocket <laughs> to 620 million. Uh, why? Are, let's see if they put it in pounds. Okay, that's 500. So that's half a billion pounds, guys. Is what what it is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry, I just got ready. Starting to get their balls out. No, I think he's to take a second to gloat. Fuck them. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, after what they've done to Doctor Who, uh, it doesn't it doesn't work that way though. B, it doesn't work that way. What's going to happen now is it's going to be a, a forced license fee increase. Exactly. Through the next review. Well, yep. remember you know? when, me, when me and you first met, I asked you how that worked because I told you my wife and I had, had a conversation when we were talking about did they automatically take it out or and you said, you know, you got to you got to put the effort to you have to pay it yourself. They're not just going to take it right out when you file your taxes or whatever. I don't know if you guys file taxes. You have to lovingly give it to the BBC. Right. But but then I know it's they had talked about actually making it part of your other taxes and somehow taking it out with that. I remember reading that a little while back. So. They're thinking about it at least. Oh, they, they will do anything to keep the BBC gravy train going. And the thing is, they can't say that. Oh well, you know, we're going to project that we've, you know, we we we're spending more money than we have when they're building new studios, when they're paying Gary Lineker nearly two million a fucking year, mm. and they're pissing money out, hemorrhaging money out out of every fucking orifice, you know, from mouth hole to asshole. And this is the shit they come back with, and yet they still want to build kind of swanky studios in that. You know, it's time for the BBC to fuck off, which yeah. sucks because I think that it's something uh, I mean, I understand, especially I'm not going to have any sort of perspective like you guys as an American. But like to me, I dig, you know, I feel like the BBC had a gold mine and fucked it up. They had um, they're already set up nicely because they're basically a goddamn governmental entity that's news and all that, which shouldn't happen anyway. Scott, what did he say? What did, uh, Doctor Who is fucked. Yep, you're right. Yep. Davros. <laughs> What's interesting is, is Doctor Who and the BBC are running a very similar timeline. You know, they once used to be great institutions. Everything's and on now that. they're just rotten pieces of shit, you know, waving a pride fucking or alphabet nonce flag around. Yep, completely agree. That's what everything's turned into. It says the yes. BBC's financial deficit is projected to reach nearly 500 million pounds next year as the corporation delivers what it has described as transformation as the transformational budget unveiling yeah. its annual plan this afternoon <clears throat> which sets priorities for the upcoming year the bbc forecasts a deficit of 492 million pounds which converts to 620 million uh, in dollars that's a shit ton of money for the 2425 for 2425 a sharp rise of 40% so that their deficit increased by 40 fucking percent, even after getting the Disney money. And you know what? If you motherfuckers hadn't been trying to push your message and shit, that partnership with Disney might, you the might problem, have had a better position for that. You know, the problem with um, the, what we just, sorry, what did you just bring up, Brandon? My mind's gone absolutely fucking blank. I, I said like they, they fucking, uh, if BBC had actually put out a good product, they could have actually turned the Disney thing maybe into a positive. Yeah, there was the Disney money. Sorry. Right. So mm -hmm. the, the problem with the Disney money is that it's very similar to Barbie and Warner Brothers. Barbie made a lot of money, but Warner Brothers owes so much money that it's like literally like pissing into the it wind. It, it, it's, it's nothing. And that's where these fucking morons are now. You know, what they need to do is stop hiring diversity coordinators, like kind of someone mentioned in the chat, and then start getting some surgical accountancy going on because. Mm -hmm. Which they won't, you know, it will never happen. Yeah, it's, uh, they're in deep shit, man. Uh, I know RTD was talking about him in an interview here recently, uh, Doctor Who thing, where he's talking like they ain't going to be there. So that was another thing they were happy about having uh, Disney from streaming. But I don't yeah, know. But, I think they'll still be yeah, there. Yeah, but the next thing, the next thing, the next day, RTD backtracked on that. He actually backtracked on that and said, well, he probably had a naughty word in his ear, didn't he, from one of the, uh, the bubble oh, moments. Oh, I mean, the thing hey, is, bitch. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is with the BBC is it's like they'll do a program. Um, there's a program on called uh, uh Tuna will know this called News Night, which is their mm. big political thing where they get a load of left wingers on and then they pick one right winger so we can be picked on by everybody. Now, that show basically right. is a studio audience, one presenter, uh, four camera, one sound man. 
Do you know how many people work in the back rooms of that show doing whatever? Probably for a program that has one presenter. Well, no, no, no. ready for this? One presenter, four cameramen, a soundman, and a couple of people in the production booth has 296 people working Jesus. on the production side. 296 people to produce one show. They got more of the bullshit goes. now than they had making Doctor Who in fucking 75. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's so go, back to the, um, go back to the oh. Sky comment where we're saying that Sky's collapsing as well. Yeah. I was like, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yo, Sky's a piece of shit as well. Sky's trashed. Sky's the difference is, is, is that you don't have to pay for Sky effectively. You know, and okay, you may not have ah. to pay for the license fee, but I think Gobs will probably understand where I'm coming from about how difficult yeah, yeah. that is. Okay, you, normal family. <laughs> but, you know, Sky could, could go and nobody would give a shit. It, it, but Sky doesn't get to get in next year and go, we need more money. You know, exactly. we've, um, we've spent more money than we've actually earned. We need more money. And that's what these fucks are going to do. You know, they, they, we're going to nearly a billion fucking pounds, a billion dollars. We, we'll be there in a couple of years' time because they yep. keep spending. They don't want to make or kind of start earning the money that they should do. Um, they just want to be this this propaganda machine. And, and fortunately, it's time for them to go. But nobody's got the balls to put the axe on it. I mean, just I mean here uh, up in the up in the Midlands, we used to have something called BBC Pebble Mill, which was like a big building, which was the Midlands hub of the BBC. That's gone now; it's got demolished and turned into housing. But um, we've actually got a show. There's, there's only one real show now that's set in the Midlands, which is um, it's an afternoon show called Doctors, which is uh -huh. just about mid. That's going because they've got to save money, but they won't scrap the shit that they make in London, where. Where here he was giving jobs to Midlands people, Midlands actors, Midlands camera crew, Midlands sound people. He gave all these people a job up here in the Midlands, and that's gone now because they don't. It's it finishes the end of this year to save money, but I don't get it. Well, I do get it because they want to centralise everything and make it just this horrible thing. The BBC protect the bubble. Yeah. Isn't it? Protect yeah, the bubble. The BBC there, needs you know. to go, but the BBC is never going to go because no. when it all boils down to it no matter how many people stamp their feet in the parliament it all comes down to it the, the government needs their propaganda mouthpiece yeah. still in place yeah and it's yeah. another and wonderful is... way of ripping money out of people i mean we yeah. pay over, over 170 was it 160 quid or something like that something i don't know that, yeah jesus because i don't pay mine um they own too man that's yeah, but the thing like is, they're dead is your BTV, dead. baby. Yeah, but the thing <laughs> is, you buy you're paying this money for what? What you're paying I mean, the, the money shit. for, Gobster. What, what you're paying what, the money what, for is for Julia the money Hardy for... to run yeah. her mouth saying that gamers need to be purged. Um, yep. while also uh, talking utter shit on CBBC because she works with children because she's got the pride flags and all that kind of shit. So of course she needs to be close to children. You know that's what you're getting. You're getting uh, these assholes yeah. that really are just talking above their station. Yeah, hey I'm man, there's a lot of up and coming Jimmy Savills. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm just to, yeah. to um to Archer Collins' comment about Death in Paradise, which mm. I'll agree is is the probably the only. There's just two shows on the BBC I absolutely love. I love Death in Paradise. That must cost a lot because they actually film it in the in the Caribbean. They yeah. actually film it out there, and it's six months of filming. I love that program. And the other one I love is Beyond Paradise, which is a spin-off of I it. I stopped watching that after, is it Ben Miller? It, yeah, when Ben Miller left. Yeah, well, left. I couldn't well, To be it fair, time, I mean, um, I didn't actually start watching it until Chris Marshall was doing it. And I actually like Chris Marshall as an actor. I think he's quite good. Uh, and I've been, and it's now it's Ralph Little who's doing it now. And to be uh, fair, it's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, it's quite interesting because the BBC can't really destroy that show because it's a white copper on a <laughs> Caribbean <laughs> island, so everybody else is black. So they can't do the they don't they can't do the diversity stuff because it, it's like it's and that's fair enough because that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You're in the Caribbean, so it's going to be majoritarily black people. But they don't oh, complain right. about that funny enough. Isn't that strange? But, you know, I might have to watch uh, or t I might have to check it out because I looked it up. That's like something my wife would really like. I'll have to tell her. To check it's good. It out. I won't it's lie. Good. I won't yeah. lie. Yeah. It's, it's all right. It's good. I enjoy it. I like to sit, me and the wife, it's one of the few things that me and the wife sit down and watch together. Yeah. And cool. we enjoy it. 
and it's you know it's it's harmless detective stuff which I solve within ten minutes because it's quite easy. You know, um, it's, just, it's enjoyable. You know it's enjoyable TV. Next. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god, yeah. We can't you know. have anything that could be potential quality content. You know, it's got to be. Uh, we need to pay Lineker another million uh, million pounds a year. For what? For being a big ear twat. Yeah, basically. Who 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 can say what he wants and get away with it? If Even I said it goes what, against BBC's own fucking charter. Yeah. Yeah, but if I, I mean, come on, let's be honest. If you or I, Tuna, said what he said out loud, we'd be nicked. We would not exist. We'd be gone. <laughs> Because we you haven't know, got that so, money, I'm afraid. Yeah. It's amazing what you can do when you're rich, isn't it? They're going to go rich to like white. reality shows and right. shit and cheap stuff. Just like They're going to they buy stuff in, here. yeah. And I think that was in um, uh, an article that I kind of off shot from that. They're um, they're going to run repeats. They're going to buy uh, bullshit in. Um, but they're still going to plead poor and they're still going to ask more money. Of they, course they're they're fo- they brought in $5.73 billion last year. 65% of which came from the license fee revenues. The remaining 35% or 1.99 billion pounds came from commer- from commercial and other activities such as grants, royalties, and rental income. Um, like I was looking up trying to, it said the BB, the way they put this on here, the BBC is state owned public, uh, is a state owned public broadcasting company and operates under a royal charter. The charter is the constitutional basis for the BBC and sets out the BBC's object, mission, and public purposes. So it's to me like looking from the outside in, it seems like something that's really been kind of um, molded with your society. So I don't, I don't see them getting rid of it, but they'll just fuck you over and make you pay more money and get themselves in more debt. The <laughs> thing is with the BBC 40 years ago. It was the pinnacle of broadcasting. It genuinely was. It was the world standard of broadcasting. It, you know, if you if you wanted to find out what was going on in the world, you tuned into the BBC, yeah. and you I got used to watch genuine, the news. Yeah, but you right. used to get genuine, impartial news, proper news reporting. They never they never pimplammed anything. They never covered anything up. You got what you saw, but then they realised that. That's not such a good idea to give that to the public because we don't really want the public to be informed. So then we have the slow but steady decline to where now, it, I mean, for me, my, my awakening for the BBC being a bunch of lies was 9-11. When 9-11 re- happened, one of the BBC reporters was reporting that World Trade Centre number seven had collapsed and it was behind her. So mm. you're lying there because it hadn't collapsed, but you were reporting that it had. And that from then on, I realised properly. Well, mind you, to be to be fair, nineteen ninety one when I got back and saw the news reports of what they said we'd done and we hadn't done and what had happened and hadn't happened, kind of got you the idea. Right. But they don't want the truth. The media doesn't no. want the truth. And the, the simple truth of the matter is, I mean, a lot of you, you know, YouTubers say the, the true media is us. We're the true media oh, now yeah. because, mm-hmm. like, tuning into this show, you'll get what how we feel. And how we see it, but we don't say anything other than this is our opinion. We don't tell right. you this is the truth. This is oh. fact. You must believe it. It's our humble opinion. This is how we see it. Yeah. And yeah. you know, and that's how you know we during the, the mainstream media are pointless. They are absolutely pointless. Even in the UK, we have GB News and Talk TV, which are supposed to be the alternative. They're not, they're paid mm. opposition, you know, they're controlled opposition. Yeah. Because you can't, they won't allow the truth. And that's why they want to slap down on YouTube and they want to slap down on anything else because they don't want people the ability to speak the truth or even give a different mm. viewpoint of what's going on. And right. And as soon yeah, as you do, as right. soon as you do, they shoot the FBI right to your house to wonder what you're doing. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Well, see, they, uh, they want to get, God, I don't know how to explain it. What say what you just said again, Gobster? I'm sorry. No, it's it's basically they don't want the truth. I mean, it's like oh I've yeah, okay, now I remember. Sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, I've crazy. done videos. I've done videos that for the first six hours are doing really, really well, and then it hits the sixth hour and I flatline. Mm. Every video it goes up and dies, and I mean not just a gentle drop down. It dies to like, next to nothing. Every single video. Every single video I've done since I've started talking about how I see things, I get an initial build up and then it dies. Yeah. 
and you watch Army. and you can go on any you go on um uh, gary's a nerd erotics gigs and gamers the same as soon as they talk about a certain subject boom it boom. dies yeah like, like your this live stream will do absolutely great until it goes out live and then you watch if you watch carefully you'll get a noise build up and then all of a sudden it'll drop like a stone and it's because as soon as they realize what you're talking about you're not yeah, recording. I've seen it happen to videos like, God damn, we'll get a lot of people to see that they'll they'll restream the, or you know what I mean, watch the replay. Nah. But yeah, um we, the difference going. between like BBC and America is over here in America, they lie and say that it's not state controlled media. They admit it where you yeah, are. We all know and, and YouTube fucked them all up because it got people uh, able to get their voice and their opinions out and stuff. But we over here, that, we? I mean, it seems like no. the media, the media is bought and paid for over here too. It's just not. It's not an official 100%. arm of the government, but by God, they, they've certainly got them singing whatever tunes they want. I mean, you know, the couth proved that. So check this out. Man. BBC. This is the BBC salary list from 23. The 10 best paid presenters revealed and who the highest earner is. So this is where their money's going. You guys probably know who some of these dudes are. BBC mm -hmm. has revealed its 10 highest earning presenters. Oh, and shout out to Time Scales, man, and everybody else watching. We've got like 40 people watching. Really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. If, yeah you're on X, uh, if you're on X, hit the link in uh, in the comments. Uh, if you're watching this on X and pop over here to YouTube, like, subscribe, and share, and catch all the links in the description. The BBC has revealed its 10 highest earning presenters with Gary. How would y'all say that? Lineker? Gary Lineker. Lineker. Or twat face for sure. Lineker, okay. Yeah, you get twat face. Well, you know I'm Southern. I lie. Everything's I, I, but Lineker. <laughs> All right. So Gary <laughs> Lineker, once again, the only star to be on a seven. So he's their only seven figure guy. The match of the day host. I'm assuming this is about football. Uh, yep. Who is on 1.35 to 1.35 for me is joined by co-star Alan Shearer who is third on the list. BBC Radio 2 breakfast show host Zoe Ball is the second highest earner. She earns £980,000. Pretty much a million, a million pounds. Yeah, that's all. Her former Radio 2 colleague Kim Bruce remains in the top 10, despite now having left the corporation to join Greatest Hits Radio. So there's the actual... Um, let's see. Come over here. here right. Oh, yeah. I was just going to ask... Oh, sorry, sorry, Gobs. I was just no. going to ask. That's what you call in England. That's how you pay your bill, right? It's like a, it's like a cable license fee or something like that. Yep, coined off. Yeah. Oh, okay. That that kind of tripped me out because I seen that video where the guy comes to his house and he's like, "You didn't pay your license." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're absolutely brilliant. Well, yeah, I'm going to give you a breakdown. Like Gary Lineker does match of the day and one show. <laughs> and he, right, Zoe Ball does a breakfast. Two a two and a half hour breakfast radio show, and that's it. Alan Shearer does match of the day, but he's an ex footballer who's worth three and a half million quid before he started doing this. Hugh Edwards is currently hiding in a mental institution because Disgusting. he was a kiddie because he was a kiddie Whoa. fiddler. As no Peter way. Is that. Stephen Nolan, I don't know. Fiona Bruce did a bit of the news. Most of these people do literally two or three hours of work a week, and they get wow. paid. You know, I mean, Ken Bruce, I don't think Ken Bruce, I think he does about an hour and a half, and he gets paid that much money. Yeah. But, so, I mean, Gary Lineker literally is on the telly for about, what, two hours a week, if that, and he gets paid $1.35 And don't forget, that doesn't include any sponsorship deals he's got. So he could okay. be earning double that. And also, Gary Lineker earned a shitload of money when he played football. So... You know, I mean, Sophie Raithworth, I mean, she does, she's on the news once every now and again. £365,000 to be on the telly for an mm. hour. And you tell me how that's fair. I just, it's just outrageous. Absolutely. And that just, wouldn't be, that wouldn't be a problem if we were talking about Sky. If this is the top 10 uh, Sky satellite. Exactly. Uh, I mean, this is taxpayer dollars. Because it's right? a, a yeah. private company, yeah. But this is effectively kind of being blackmailed through through the UK public. Mm. Right. Oh, uh, they can't win for losing, man. Did y'all see this? Uh, they'll nope. stop. The, they were using AI. I don't know how many things they actually put out, but th this corporation mm -hmm. can't win for losing, man. Neither can the uh, British people who have to fund the sun bitch. 
but it says BBC will stop using AI for Doctor Who promotion after receiving complaints. So these lazy no bastards. Jesus. They get, but they, they can pay some dumb fuck presenter who's in a mental institution or kitty did the bullshit, but they can't pay somebody to, to draw up some fucking art or something for their one of their number one shows. Yeah, you know what the best thing is? You know what the best thing is? They used AI and no one fucking noticed. <laughs> <laughs> no one right. noticed. No one even cared. <laughs> They've, they've got this AI, and it was uh, probably, actually, to be fair, it was probably a little bit better than the actual people who write Doctor Who. It was a quality no improvement. One no yeah, but no one noticed. Probably with who they got Literally now. Literally yeah. no one noticed. No one give a monkeys. <laughs> no one's interested. Wow, this is a freaking unbelievable, man. Oh, they're supposed uh, to be actually, dropping uh, a new trailer for Doctor Who tomorrow, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, need, they need a new one. They need a new one because the first one got ratioed that bad. Oh, don't worry. The second one's going to get ratio just as hard. Oh, but right. get ready because they're going to give us the eight episode names like we care, <laughs> like we give a shit. No one cares. It's not like really? it used to be. It would be cool to speculate based on the titles. Now we'll be speculating and talking like mad shit about them based on the title. Yeah. Like, what's this going to be? A fucking pride parade or, or some shit? shit you know what I mean? About. All right. I mean, we, um, know, we know one of the episodes is actually going to be a musical. Mm hmm. That's how shit it's got. Is We're doing Beatles a musical one, we huh? Like the Joker too. One, yeah. It's, it's, be the, cool. it's going to be the yeah. 60s one with Jinx Monsoon in, and it's going to yeah. be a musical. Just like That's, Strange New Worlds did that musical, and that was fucking shit as well. Yeah? If you're doing musicals, no offense, we stopped being able to do musicals uh, in the late 50s. We Pretty don't much. do musicals very good. I mean, they died the only exception that would probably be Greece would probably be the last decent kind of musical. I, yeah. I, I would Maybe Sweeney Todd or Les Miserables. Buffy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Took oh, well, a good yeah. That, that yeah, to be that. fair, I will give you that. that. The one that Buffy did was brilliant. But the thing is, the one with Buffy, it kind of made sense in the story. Mm. Yeah. It made, because it's a spirit, isn't it? It's ghosts. It makes sense. That makes sense. Star Trek didn't make sense. Doctor Who won't make sense. Buffy did make sense, and that's why it was good. You know, and that's it. But musical? Oh, yeah, uh, P.D. Richards, Xena Warrior Princess also did a musical. Oh, one. Uh, yeah, that, still <laughs> yeah, and that was okay. They weren't too bad either, to be fair, to be honest. I mean, if it's done well, but the thing there is... Was a... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, the thing is, we're, this one's going to be with our drag, our drag queen in it. Yeah, you know, yeah, who's yeah. Just, who's just got that feminization. Yeah, that's what you're gonna say, wasn't it? G virus. That that's what I'm trying to call it now, by the way, because I think it's very fitting. Yeah, G that's yeah. what I was gonna say. That's that's what they're all into. They're all into that stuff. You you got to think about it. It's ABC crew running this stuff now, and they love that stuff. They love to perform. They love <clears> to, <throat> they that's a, that's what it's all about. Is that attention? They just want that attention. They want well, people to look at him and just talked about. I'd love to know what uh, Jinx or whatever the fuck they're called is being paid. Oh, oh God, God. there's no telling. I, I would like to know myself. Maybe that shit gets published publicly if it comes out of the BBC. Nah. Nah. Sure. Will it? If Disney no, it is, uh, oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, it could come like, from Bad you Wolf. Are not go, you're yeah. not going to get any financial stuff because all that's going to be hidden right. by Disney. It's all yeah, going to be right. hidden by Disney. You're not going to get any right. of that. Right. Once yeah, once the mouse got involved, you can forget exposure about financials and how much it's done. It's all going to be hidden. All going to be hidden. There's a uh, there's two other examples of a musical, one good, one bad. There's this old cartoon that me and my son, who's 16 now, we used to love watching together. And I'm pretty sure I watched it with my oldest, who's almost 22, but it's called Batman the Brave and the Bold. It's kind of more I love like it. a, a cheesy throwback to like the 50s and 60s of the comics, which I'm a big fan of. And they had a, a musical episode. And I, I, funny enough, it was Neil Patrick Harris, who was this character called the Music Meister. And it caused everybody who was around to sing. And that was pretty good. It, it made sense. Yeah, but that but makes uh, sense. the bad that one. That makes sense to me. I mean, well, that makes they, sense. exactly. And in, in Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds, they did a terrible one. And they, they had a decent enough story reason, but it was just like, this is no fucking place here. Can we um can we have like a minute right. silence for what uh, Paramount have done to Star Trek? Oh, like, Jesus. Just, yeah. I'm representing just, you know, just, uh, you know, in memorial. Mm. They have fucked that franchise. And the movie that they're trying to put out, Star Trek 4, holy shit. It, it's a shit show, oh, bro. Uh, you want to talk? 
We you guys want to talk 31. about? That was good. We got section thirty-one coming. Don't forget. They were going to release a series of section thirty-one, which no one wants. Who cares? And it's not no even. Wants. It's not even the the section thirty-one from the actual fucking the what I consider the canon Star Trek. It's some fucking silly bullshit they've made up. Sorry, Thrash, mate. Go on. What, so what are you going to no, say? Go on, Thrash. Oh, all I was going to say, if you want to talk about disappointment, I live with someone that started the Star Trek conventions, helped on the helped on the no. stages and everything. Oh, yeah, like a hundred percent. Yeah, you want to talk about? She's watching. She's watching the new ones. She's trying, man. She's struggling. Some of them, she's just like, "What in the hell is this?" You know yeah, what I mean? It's, it's, it's just not it's the same, not man. Sad. It is. It's not right. It's so sad. It's like they literally, for me, they've literally taken everything that I loved as a child and destroyed it. Yes, absolutely destroyed it. Don't get me wrong. I'll watch the. I mean, I'll go back and watch all the originals right up to Enterprise. Exactly, but. You know, when Star Trek was Star Trek and when canon actually meant something, like I'll watch all classic Doctor Who, you know, when canon meant something. And I'll watch all the classic and all the proper Star Wars films when <clears> canon <throat> meant something. I mean, the last decent film I would say Star Wars was was Rogue One. I enjoyed Rogue One, and that's because they made an effort to make it fit the trilogy. They actually made the effort, mm. even getting the two actors for Red Leader and Gold Leader to come back and do actual audio to make it fit. That was right. good. That was good. But then it just went to shit in a handbasket. And well, now don't worry. you'll have the acolyte in June and that'll make it all better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, geez. I, don't, I just oh, can't I wait. I don't know if I can even watch that, that one. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing. Is when, it comes, when it comes to Star Trek, what I want is, as an example, one of my favourite scenes from DS9, is Cisco losing his fucking shit because what's going on with the Marquis threatening mm -hmm. to blow up this fucking planet with you know whatever the fuck laser oh, torpedo? Oh like, yeah, when he laces the whole planet, planet, makes it uninhabitable. Yeah, you know, I don't give a fuck if you don't do what I need to do. I'm blowing yeah. this bitch, and he fucking not does. Cling on singing and dancing in some gay yeah. fucking space opera, you know? Fire, anyway. Mister Worf, because well, Worf's like, what? What? You yeah. want me to do what? Because he Even thought he was just bullshit. Like, oh man, this this boy's yeah. crazy. Go back and watch DS9, people. And that's okay. I'm so glad you said that, Tuna, because that is one of the big messages of the culture council is you know, we may rag on some this bullshit, but we're gonna point you, <laughs> we're gonna point you towards some good stuff too. You like you need to talk about good stuff, just like what Godfrey right. said. I'm on a, a classic who rewatch right now. Um, I, I mean, I, I love read a lot of old comics, watch old movies and stuff. So, I mean, there's plenty out there to enjoy. Uh, you can and, and that's you know, I think a lot of that's probably happening. You know, what I mean, I mean, it got me to watch classic Doctor Who and just absolutely fell in love with it. So, I think a well, lot. I of love people... the old stuff. Mm -hmm. I've never, I've never watched it. Never watched it. And someone said, it, someone at work actually said, "Dude, you need to check this out." So, so I started like watching these old ones, and I, I love old sci-fi, and that's exactly cool. what Doctor Who is, just to the oh, yeah. point. I mean, that's a creation of old school sci-fi, and then you look at what's going on now, you're like, this is not. The same thing that I was trying to watch back here. This is ridiculous. It's that right, message. Now, you gotta have that message. Now we got Jinx. Jeez, man. No, now we, we are Jinx. Jinx. Yeah. Yeah. She's, I mean, like, I, I, I'm kind of burnt out on all this shit. Like, <laughs> I'm like so burnt out on it. Jeez. And it's like, hey, you and, know, and what it, the fuck, man. It was like their final, it was like Russell T. Davies. Like he's, I'm laying in Doctor Who's grave, and I look up, and that motherfucker shovels some more dirt on me, and he's like, "Ha ha, ha fuck you, you white never straight enough. wanker." Never <laughs> enough. It, it is. It's never enough, man. But yeah, so I what's hate the story with Jinx then? Be. Uh, she is a drag queen. Let's see if they you got. Had, sorry, you had an article. Up. That was all. I wonder what the article was. Oh, um, da -da -da -da. I don't know if it was about her. Let me see. Oh, uh, yeah, I did have an article up. It was because I clicked it for a link for a picture. Uh, see right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, oh, this one right here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. U.S. United States lawmakers targeting drag. A good catch to it. Uh, targeting drag won't stop with Queen, says performer Jinx Monsoon. This yeah. is uh, from April 1st before anybody even knew who this fool was. So, <laughs> this is the older article, but yeah, um, what they're doing is they're passing a lot of laws in um, in different states. Oh, that, this guy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I said, they're, yeah. They're, yeah they're, exactly. They're starting to pass a lot of laws in states to starting to protect children now. And these motherfuckers are acting like they're getting drugged to the gas chamber over it. 
and I assume they're acting the same in England and everywhere else. Oh, so yeah, they, yeah. They, they oh, better yeah, act yeah. that way at home because there's a lot of motherfuckers uh, praying three times a day that won't put up with their bullshit, so they better stay in their house in the UK. <laughs> but, hey, I, I, mean, I guarantee you. I'm not. I'm not playing games. If if this dude comes up to me, any of these dudes come up to me, and they're like, "I'm this and that and here and there," I'll be like, "No, you're you're a freaking man. If you irritate me, I'm gonna treat you like one." You yeah. know what I mean? I will never pretend that's some lady because it, it. Look at that. That's just a mess, dude. What in the hell? Hey. How, why is this person not embarrassed? How are these people not embarrassed? It's so freaking embarrassing. It's I guess like he's allowed them to carry on and make it okay. Right, because mm -hmm. they tell because they pat them on the ass and tell them it's great, you're doing great. You just don't listen to what people say, and us regular people got to deal with this crap every freaking day. Push it in our face. We don't want Same it, and the they're getting mad. Line. Same with all that other shit as well. Yep, yep. yep. Sim the simple Trump thing is with drag queen artists and everything else, and pronouns, or whatever. Look, you want to call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. That's great. I'm just not playing right. your game. I'm not playing yeah, exactly. your game. Exactly. You if you want to call yourself a light shade, you call yourself a light shade. I'm happy for you. Yeah? But I don't give a shit. I'm not interested right. in you. Don't right. tell me. If you want to play your game, play your game. I'm not interested in playing it. And don't force me to play it. Because if you force me to play it, I'm going to get nasty. Because I don't want right. to play your game. Yeah? It's as well, simple as that. Look, everybody's, is entitled, everybody's entitled in this world to be whatever they want to be. And that's fine. And I am genuinely and truly happy. For everyone, if that's what you want to be and that makes you happy, great, crack on. But please don't expect me to have to change my reality and my life to please you. Because right. I've never asked I've never asked you to do the same. So don't ask back. And if you want to push, genuinely, you will get a pushback and you won't like the pushback that I give. So yeah. you know, live and let live. But it's good that we're starting to see more and more of that. People slowly mm -hmm. are starting to turn around saying, nah, I, I can't be dealing with this. Exactly. Right. Well, this here here's my thing is uh, if you come up to me with pronouns, like if I'm at the store or something or the restaurant on a regular day, I don't come up to you and say, miss, mister, they, them. I say, excuse me. Can I order this, this and that? Thank you. Yep. you know what I mean, I don't take time to figure out who or what the what the hell you are to begin with. I don't have that respect for you. You have to earn it from me. Once yep. that happens, then I'm going to be like, all right, we'll talk about it. You know what I mean? If you want to play that goofy game, I'll, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm not playing it, but you got it. You, I'll give you respect. I got to get that. I got to get that respect back. If I don't, I'm not even saying, hey, Mr. Mrs. DJ. I'm saying, excuse yeah. me. Can I get one of these and one of those? Thank you. Yeah. Do yeah, you I, see, because I mean, I would say like you and I are, are on different sides of the planet as far as the difference between North Carolina and California. But like you live so close and in the big city and shit, do you encounter a lot more of the stuff in your face than say I would? Because I see it. I mean, it's in our little town, but my I got I live in a town of like say thirty or forty k people or some shit, uh, counting some of the outer uh, towns in the county. And uh, mostly, what I see, man, I don't see it in the streets so much. Is having children in high school, I see it more. In my area, it's more infiltrating on a lower level in the schools and growing root there. Whereas, say, if I went over to Cali, L.A., I would imagine it's much more in my fucking face if I walk down the street. Is that the way it is or not? Not well. You got all right. Right now, I'm in Menifee, but I run around all over in L.A. You know, I'm from mm -hmm. L.A. originally, right? Problem is, I'm from the ghetto. And ain't none of those people playing games. You got to watch out because they'll freaking you. You come up to them, they say, hey, I'm they them. Easy target. You know what I mean? Come here, they, them. I want to show you Give something. Your wallet. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, walk down South Central LA and try to do that shit. You know, it's not going to happen. It's not. That's the same thing when people are like, oh, you can't be racist to white people. I've been spitting my face just because I'm white. That's how I learned how to fight. You know, that's where all this came yeah, from because right. I was white. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's, it, that kills me when people, oh, you can't be racist to white people. I was working on a car in South Central LA, white, dark, black dude walks by and just says, well, I guess white boys are good for something. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, I just, oh uh, yeah dude that kills me when people say that I, I always tell them let's go for a walk I'm, I'm gonna take you exactly where we're gonna go for a walk and you tell me you can't be racist to white people when we're done I'll have to give you an ice pack for that eye because you're probably gonna get cracked you know just for right. being white you know Amen. what I'm saying it's it's crazy Amen. man but yeah we don't see none of that because I'm in the ghetto I'm in you know, we're, we're a bunch of dirt bags over here you know what I'm saying <laughs> so so that this is the people they've been talking about uh and and this is one of those you know oh, white God. people <sighs> black people can't be racist or, or against white people, or you can't be racist Black girl magic. Uh, 
But like that's mm-hmm. all they've been talking about is this is one of those groups. And Tuna, you might have to correct me on this. Was this not one of those groups that was somewhat like say um sweet baby and stuff like that? I mean, didn't they get found out to be kind of yeah, I mean they're aligned, aren't they? Um they're one of the kind of the demon companies. They're um I don't know if this is what you were pointing towards, but they're getting a lot of bother mm-hmm. because they're trying to threaten kind of news sites. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Yeah, oh, okay. oh, cool. Well, I'll just go right mm-hmm. on and step right the fuck in it then. So Black Girl right, Gamers right. announces legal action against entertainment news outlet culture. No, <laughs> against entertainment news outlet that park place. I follow him on uh on X. Recent reports suggesting video game diversity consultant company engages in discriminatory hiring practices. Well, anything that we say about these uh, motherfuckers is our opinion. This is an opinion show. So the thing is, it's not. um, I I don't have obviously the materials at hand, but it's not suggesting anything. They said in a post. I know. Where did what happened to that? I can't find anywhere. They're looking for, um, Mm. but obviously now all this stuff has exploded, and these people are being shown to be the frauds that they are. That they, you know, they're, they're they're lashing out and they're not thinking properly and they're just making themselves like even more fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. 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 So there you. It says in the latest escalation of the ongoing SBI discourse, video game diversity consultation company Black Girl Gamers has announced their intent to seek legal action against entertainment news outlet That Park Place over a recent report alleging that they engage in racially discriminatory hiring practices. All right. I wish they would have the thing. Like, see, me and Tuna both saw a thing earlier this week that showed like them, and we talked about this yesterday. Didn't we? It was like where they had screwed with the way people were going to be presented. Like, you know how they're drawing women ugly and they make them yeah. like thicker and not and not as more yeah. yeah. basically. We'll see what uh, PD said. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, PD it's true rich. there. Uh, it's all He's absolutely wrong. Yeah, he's yeah, right. yeah. He's so, right. uh, as far as we know, they have admitted to as much, and, and people have seen like their their older posts and shit. Um, the latest development was kicked off on March fifteenth. That Park Place editor in chief, John F. Trent, published a report entitled "For Spoken Consultant: Black Girl Gamer Appears Gamers Appears to Discriminate in Their Hiring Practices While Claiming They're Being Harassed." In support of his headline suggestion, Trent cited a sole February 24 tweet wherein Black Girl Gamers put out a public call for, quote, Black women content creators that make Dungeons, uh, Dragons, D&D content for some potential brand work, and they actually have it. There it is. Okay. There you go. Wow. We already know that Wizards of the Coast is already in bed with these people. You know, they they, um, a conversation from SBI. So it's no surprise, you know, Magic the Gathering is in the toilet, d d is in the toilet. I would have, if, if everything wasn't fucked and I had not heard all the bad stuff about um, Wizards and, and of the co- of Wizards of the Coastline bullshit, I, was, I would have almost gotten back into trying to learn how to play Magic because they dropped, a friend of mine told yeah, me they dropped the Doctor Who set. And I was like, mm, and they play games and shit like that. And I was like, nah, nah, I'd probably be dog shit. You're I don't, I don't, the, I don't uh, play my Rose Noble card. In the news a little while ago about the you know um the black aragorn card you know that's what you yeah. With. yeah 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 i played yeah. my um for five mana i played my rose noble uses her um trans abilities to outsmart Damn. evil so she, you know? <laughs> but so uh i guess they're suing my man and uh that's they're gonna lose don't lose no I mean, it's, there, it's there in black and white i mean it's literally on the tweet saying that's exactly what they're doing so, looking hey, for black women content creators to make Dungeons and Dragons content for some potential brand work. That's racist. That's very racist. racist. Super so racist. Exceedingly racist. <laughs> uh, looking racist for against white people, though, boys. Yeah. Well, so, no, guys, no. go ahead, Gobster. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying. No, go you, ahead. I'll come in after. Imagine, you. imagine the outrage if you put, "We're only hiring white people." Yeah. How long would you think that would last? I'm going to post on Axis. Is- it wouldn't this last. Is, it wouldn't uh, last for a minute. Culture Council wouldn't. looking for white guests and see how that goes over. Well, that's what <laughs> right, right. And the thing, the thing yeah, that I would, I wouldn't care, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, thing is, the thing okay. is that's the, the thing is, is they can't sue when they've actually tweeted out saying that's they all they're going to hire. You right. can't sue. 
You just can't sue when you blatantly said it we only want black what people. It exactly, is that they say right. they're not doing? So they've just done it. So they. Uh, uh, it looks like they said something. Addressing the report roughly two weeks later, Black Girl Gamers took to their official company Twitter account on March the 26th to declare, we're addressing the recent allegations published on that place.com about discriminatory hiring practices within Black Girl Gamers. These claims are false and were made without prior fact-checking or verification from us or our representatives, but... It's right there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you don't need yeah, them to fact check anything when it's in black and white. Yeah, yeah, but they're, yeah they're bragging there's about it. Way, yeah, mm -hmm. but there's a way to solve this, isn't there? There's an easy way to prove this. Get a load of white people to apply. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, um, yeah. You know what the all process get is for joining their community or applying for jobs? Yeah. Uh -huh. Even to join their community, this is kind of black girl gamers, you need to provide a photo of yourself, full information, address. That's to join their community, not even just apply for jobs. Holy shit. But is it There's really? certain discords and shit like that, man. <laughs> yeah, but that's wrong, isn't it? Mm. it, it fundamentally, wrong. that's wrong. Yeah. Fundamentally. I mean, the thing is, if you're doing that, then you're clearly, you clearly have an agenda. You clearly are making it impossible I for certain. I think um, with a company named Black Girl Gamers, I think the agenda is pretty clear, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but, oh, then, yeah. The thing is, why are they allowed to say that? Imagine if it was white girl gamers. Mm. Is there a white girl gamers? Is that allowed to exist? And it well, sounds like a company that's going to gonna have several people. It would be one thing if it was like three people and that's all it was ever going to be. And you're like, you know, the white boy council or something, because that's what the fuck we are. But uh, this is clearly discriminatory and, and, and elitist. I don't know if I say elitist, but like it's really ex trying to be exclusive in their own club. What kills me the like, most, go ahead. Well, like, I'm sorry, but I was just going to say what kills me the most is as far as what they're doing. I mean, my dad gave me the very first, uh, uh, the like season one of freaking Dungeons and Dra Dragons. I have the freaking, I have the whole thing right here. The very first Sweet. one. You know what oh, I'm saying? I'm a huge, oh, huge Neverwinter fan. I, dude, I will play Neverwinter all day, and now that's ruined. It's going to be mm -hmm. ruined. You know what I mean? Because it's not going to be the same thing. You know, because that right here, you see that agenda first. Get that agenda in, get that message in. The game is like, oh, well, well, maybe you can get a game in the DLC. I don't know. You know what I mean? But it's all that game's just going to be screwed. Anything they make. Do you know, you know it's how, uh, well, I was just say, like, you know how you get more people into something? Like, their whole shtick is they think they're going out for this mythical audience they haven't tapped yet because, the, oh, they've been you know. excluded or something. No, the audience that they had up to that point are the people that this particular product has spoken to. And if you want to try to get more people in on this product, what you have to do is do shit so good for the people who are already watching that they tell other people. Yeah. And it, word of mouth, that's how the hell you do it. Not by excluding them and then making a product for people who don't give a shit and ain't going to give you your money anyway. And yeah, that's it's, the, um, it's the audience that, that never buys anything, isn't it? And Magic the Gathering yeah. is not the kind of game where you want to be pandering to people that don't buy anything. And that's probably why Hasbro is in the fucking toilet. Oh, I yeah. Never, I never yeah. foresaw things getting this bad, like, like this ridiculous. So well, it, there's a good thing though, because the the pushback to that or the responses is that more independent game creators are starting to get a bit more of a, a spotlight, you know, in more independent yep. card games, more independent kind of D and D based games, and that's what we're yep. going to start seeing. We're going to start seeing more people bring their ideas to the fold, and people adopt them and start playing them. That's good. Meanwhile, Hasbro is going to have a cash flow crisis because nobody wants to buy any of their shit. Right. Yep. True. Yep. You know what makes me the saddest about all this? really does make me sad after spending what? many 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 decades yeah. driving the lack and destruction of segregation mm -hmm. just when it was all going now they want segregation themselves yeah, yeah now there's a lot of people that were complaining about it the first time it, it, it baffles so me yeah all that hard work that black activists did to get rid of segregation to get rid of black rooms black people only white people only rooms They've almost succeeded in doing this, and now they want the reverse. That's what's the saddest thing about this. As I said yeah. last week, we were that close, that close to fulfilling Martin Luther King's dream. And oh, shit, just... yeah. Yeah, I meant to bring that back up when you said that. We were... Yeah, but it's true. Uh, we were literally right close. We, we could have actually fulfilled his dream, and it's a good dream. It's a brilliant dream. 
And now we want segregation, but on their terms. Well, now they're too busy asking for reparations and trashing Walmart, aren't they? See, we exactly. needed that. We needed to stand together to be ready for uh, the thing that's conquering the West right now, unfortunately. And yep. whether that's people from one part of the world or from another, depending on whether you're my country or yours. But like we needed, that's why they destroyed yep. our unity and what we almost achieved because they had to weaken us. You know, yep, now you got like yep. for half the country, you don't know whether you can trust them or not if you were invaded. Yeah, because right. they suddenly they realized. The government realized that if they actually do do this and they do get together, we're in trouble because they're going to realize who the enemy really is. So they have paid bad actors to destroy the possibility of a harmonious human race. And do that you think, is the biggest disgrace to the world ever. Let me, ask you, guys, let me ask you guys a question. So... Uh, for one thing, one thing that confuses me is, is that one of the smarter tactics, and we all have heard our whole lives learn about Rome. Oh, we, I, I mentioned Roman Empire today, but I always think about it like every fucking day, but bread and circuses, right? I mean, honestly, guys, I, I, I you know, the only reason that we hadn't turned over the table and, and just started stacking bodies and fucking both countries up is because we have shit to fall back on to do. The motherfuckers, just like you said, uh, um, Oh, the first time you were on Gopshi, you mentioned how there's not as many pubs and people met together in pubs and decided yep. to, to, to change things, right? If you want to put yep. it in a nice way. And and that that's not here anymore. And we have all these other distractions. But here's the thing that baffles me. Why would they fuck with us? I mean, may, maybe some people are, are, they really are bought into the cult. I know some people are bought in and they believe this black girl gamers type mentality, the segregative mentality and shit. But I would have figured that they would have stayed out of this entertainment longer, but then again, maybe they accomplished what they need to, to keep us distracted. So now it's in entertainment and people that don't give a fuck about the news that ignore shit. It's, it started ruining their Star Trek, their Doctor Who, their fucking whatever Star Wars. And uh, I, I think it would have been smarter on their part to have like kept the infiltration out of that. You know what I mean? Because they did, you know, that's where you're going to piss people off, especially Americans. man. Yeah. No. Um, and so, like, I just, I wonder, um, I mean, I, I guess, obviously, this is all part of the same, like, concerted effort to accomplish one goal. <clears throat> yep, it certainly is. It certainly is. Mm. I mean, that's that was the point of re the removal of religion. Yeah. The removal oh, of yeah. religion. Because when we had religion, we had a set a set of rules to follow, a leader who told us what to do, how to behave, how to think, and how we conducted ourselves in life. We mm. remove that, and then what's left is transgenderism or the government or, you know, Black Lives Matter. We've re got rid of religion, and now we don't, because we're so uh, adrift, we need to cling on to somebody to tell us what to do, how to behave, what to think, and this is what we're getting. And it's been done yeah. on purpose. It has been done on purpose because... As I said, I, I'm really, you know, rediscovering my religion, and we need we need a set of rules, and we don't have rules anymore. Rules have gone now. You, you, I mean, if you can now identify as anything that you really, really want to be, I can identify as a woman. I can walk into a female toilet and do whatever I want, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. That's evil. It's yeah, it's insane. Yeah. And you look at the stuff that's going on in the world at the moment, and it is complete insanity. This is not the normal behavior. These, if you follow the, you know, if you follow the, any religion, if you follow the rules, none of this shit would happen. But it's right. been allowed to happen. And the reason, the reason that Islam is being allowed to come in is because the followers of Islam are very compliant. If an imam tells them to do something, they do it without question. Scary so what they want to do is they want to bring in a religion that will do as it's told. 100%. 100% right on. Yeah, not question. Yeah, sure. Yes. I heard something, and if it's not something you talk about like online or whatever, you just shut me down, no worries. Um, no, carry uh, on. Somebody mentioned something to me about, because uh, I was on the subject of, um, you know, like joking about my wife being scared that things I say would fuck up like careers and, you know, things like that. 
And I, and, and somebody said something about you. You had dealt with something like that personally. And I, I mean, I don't know if you don't talk about that. Fine. I ain't trying to get up in your business. Huh. But like uh, uh, I, I was told you had to deal with something similar, but I've never heard you yourself talk about it. Well, the thing is, um, it was on my previous channel. Um, mm -hmm. and, well, it's difficult because when I decided I, originally, as you all know, my, my channel, if you go back on my channel back a while away, you can see I'm just a huge Doctor Who fan. I'm a mm -hmm. huge Star Wars fan. That's I'm a huge why we Star all know Trek each fan. other. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just I love sci-fi. Well, I love old sci-fi now. I rephrase that. I love, but it <laughs> was mean. coming to a stage where I was beginning to notice the fact that things were not right in the world, and then I had to make a conscious decision. And this is the thing, and this is what frightens a lot of people: is the fact that I know now that I've lifted my head above the parapet wall. And I am, and I, I mean, just recently, in last week, and while I was while I was actually away, I had seven people send me death threats because of what mm. I say. Shit yeah, on me. I mean, yeah, I mean, not, I mean, yeah, I mean, literally, one guy actually said, um, "I'm going to say this here so everybody can understand that the, the problem that you issue, which is probably why 77 percent don't speak, right. is he was going to, he wanted me to off myself so he could." Pay a visit to my wife and my children and rape my wife. How can? And that's what I got. And that's what I got. I mean, it's gone to the police. Nothing will happen, of course, because I'm white. Mm. Right. And that's the problem that you face. Now, I know full well that speaking out is a bad thing. I genuinely know that speaking out is a bad thing. But I've got to a stage where I have to say something. I have young children, I have young grandchildren, and I am not prepared for them to live in this world. Right. This world is surrounded by evil. This is why I am now back with religion, because there is pure evidence right in front of my face that evil exists and is walking this planet. Yeah. When I have my child passed, apparently well, it didn't, has to go to a mosque for religious studies, and I get dragged into the school and called a racist because I said, no, they're not, then right. this is wrong. Wow. Yep, this is wrong. Yep. When so I they would just go ahead, they yeah, would just go ahead and have to call me a racist then. I don't care exactly at that wrong. point. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, like, there was a fight at my kid's infant school where four Asian kids jumped a white kid and the teacher and the camera system apparently didn't see a thing. <laughs> yeah. This uh, is wrong. Oh, yeah. And I can't sit by and not say anything. But I am also fully aware that by saying something, I paint a target on my back. Now, I'm fortunate that I don't work now. I've retired. Yeah, I'm 55 years old. I've retired. Okay, I, I don't have to. So I don't have to worry about that career. But which is why also it's Mrs. Gobster. You won't know where my wife works. You won't know right, where my right, wife right. is. Because her career could be at risk by me speaking out. Mm. I also have, this is where the fun begins, my stepdaughter is a serving police officer at West Midlands oh. Police. Oh. Oh, shit, man. But fortunately for her, she doesn't have the sur same surname as me. So I have mm. an insight of what the police have to put up with. And I could tell you so much stuff, but I'm not going to because operational reasons, etc. Right, right, And I'm not right. going to put her in the dump. Yeah, I'm not going to dump on her. I know I have lots of friends still in the military and a lot of friends in senior positions in the military who are telling me how bad things really, really are. Mm. But I can't say anything because it's official secrets act. Now, when when you had the situation, if, if, if you had a situation personally, like where your job said something to you about something they didn't like, what was the thing online that was like the thing they didn't like the most or that, you, you, that they said um, something to you about? Islam. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, that's, right. that's the that's the straightest way to the office. <laughs> yeah, well, the and the thing is, they dragged me. This is before I retired. They dragged me in and said you shouldn't be saying things like this. And my exact words were, "Go fuck yourself." 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. I am I am still allowed to criticize a religion. It's a religion. Yep. I am not criticizing the people practicing the religion. I am criticizing the religion itself because it is a demonic, evil, sick religion. And it has no Nothing purpose good. in the world. Mm. It's, it's, if you have a religion that's based on a guy who was a warlord who killed everyone who didn't agree with him and slept with young girls, that is not a religion to follow. I'm sorry, whether you like it or not, it isn't. Yeah? I, I, I got okay. a question about that religion real quick. I oh, want to know if, if one of you guys can name one good thing that's come out of that. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I've seen Lady Stone to death. I've seen people like thrown off of buildings. I've seen people getting in, uh, like running up and just beating on uh, ladies because their head's not covered. I want to know what's the good stuff. Ready for, this, ready for this. We have Go people ahead. in the West who will defend Islam because they look after their women so well. <laughs> I explained really? to my wife. My, yeah, because my wife doesn't understand, didn't understand it. And she said, well, I don't get it. I said, well, okay, well, if you, if we convert to Islam, you will do everything I say, whether you like it or not. I can take four of the wives if I want to. You will wear everything to cover your face. You will not be allowed to listen to music. You will not be allowed to have education. You will not be allowed to go anywhere. You will not be allowed to look at another man because if you do, I am legally allowed to stone you to death. <laughs> and yep. this is the religion that you want to follow. You will walk three paces behind me and don't you dare speak to me unless I've asked you to. I said, is that the world that you want? And well, she told me to fuck off basically. <laughs> but this <laughs> right. is the thing they don't get. This is the thing that they don't get. This is a religion that treats women horrendously. They are seen as nothing more than baby, the baby machines. That is their job. I had a woman who actually was a Muslim who said, Oh, well, we're allowed to keep our surnames after we got married. I said, yeah, can you uncover yourself and listen to pop music? Then she went, well, no, of course not. <laughs> right. said, so, you're free. so you're free then, are you? Well, Muhammad says, I said, no, Muhammad doesn't say, look, I, you know, I'm a Christian. I follow God. Yeah, no offense. God smites a lot of people and knocks a lot of people down if you don't believe in him. But at least he's a good person. He doesn't say, if your wife does this, you have the right to stone them to death. No, he doesn't say that. You know, and it's like, and because I criticize Islam, which is why the word Islamophobic is such an outrageous word, because it really is. What it's for is to silence criticism of a religion that is incompatible with humanity. Yeah. It treats everybody terribly. It's just, it's incompatible. How anyone can follow a religion that you will do as some bloke who decides that he's an imam tells you to do how you can sit there and then and you read the quran and you know i'm reading the bible i'm I, I am now reading the bible i've read the quran as well yeah and the quran quite clearly says either you convert or you die that, that's yeah. like page one that's you've seen the videos haven't the you book. of these people kind of saying that i mean it's just i mean you know mm. get queer and then if you leave story. you're like an apostate <laughs> well We've had a, we That's have, the well, dumbest we've had a, shit I've ever seen. Yeah, but you've had yep. you've had accounts where people, yeah, queers for Palestine, turkeys for Christmas. It's true. These people go out and say, oh, yeah, you know, queers for Palestine. If you were in a Muslim country, mate, the only saving grace at the moment in Gaza is there's no tall buildings <laughs> left. Right. You know, the, the Israelis have took all the tall buildings down that you could be thrown from, but you will be dragged. You will be killed. Yeah. 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 The Muslim I mean, fight. The may, yeah, there may, not, there may not be a tall building left on the strip. The marketing oh. and PR team for this religion, they're doing a top job because they're making, you know, these idiots, you know, a, quite a fair few people in you know the US, the UK, believe that the most savage religion ever is something that we should be protecting and that there's they're some poor little victim. And it's that kind of thing, isn't it? Of call shit, play victim. And yep. People just keep falling for it. And I just don't understand how people are that blind. No, mate. I mean, look, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's going right. They'll on... kill you or force you to have a sex gene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here's an idea. Let's all go on holiday to Saudi Arabia. 
Okay, so we all go on holiday in Saudi Arabia. We're in, in our hotel, and we decide to go out for a walk with the missus. And the missus is wearing a bikini, and you're chewing gum. You are now arrested because you've broken the law. And Good there is no, no, oh, I didn't know. No, you, you were told. You broke the rules. Yeah, so you're arrested. When we, whenever we went on deployment in the army, we were told we had a sheet and a briefing. This is how the local customs are. This is what you do. This is what you don't do. Don't do this. You say this. You don't, because we should. You should wherever you go in the world, you should respect their belief system and their religion, because that's the good thing to do. So right. why is they allowed to come to the UK and the USA and do the complete? opposite if i go to qatar on a visit somewhere i respect their religion i will if they say you can't eat gum out in the street i won't eat gum out in the street because that's their laws and that's their rules and that's the way and right. i abide by those rules it's that simple right, yeah. right. oh i was just gonna say i watched the video one time and it was about the uh it was an egyptian dude and they asked them, hey, how come you don't take in people from, you know, people from over there, you know, Palestinians or whatnot? And I, I shit you not. He said, hey, look, we're all brothers in this world. But check this out. They are known for going into your country and then trying to invade it and try to convince you it was theirs the whole time. So they're yeah, like, yeah. thank you, but no, thank oh, you. And that's exactly yeah. what they're doing right now. <laughs> everywhere. Egypt, I mean, Egypt and Jordan yeah, won't fuck with them. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Israel had between Palestine and Israel, two walls, yeah, two wall defense. Okay. Yeah. Each Egypt has nine. It has nine walls between it and Egypt. Doesn't that say a lot? Damn. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that's nine walls you... that are patrolled. In you know, nine nine physical barriers, and no one moans to Egypt and says, "Why have you got them?" Yeah, no one goes, Oh, Egypt, why have you got nine walls? And the reason they got nine yeah. walls because they don't want to let that scum in because the last time they let him in, they screwed the country up. They're yeah. not stupid. Yeah. So, where's the logic? How is it okay for one Rare set of people to go? And shit. I'll tell you because whatever administration is running the show right now, that's what they want. They want us gone. If you have strength, they want it gone. They don't want nothing to do with you. They want these weak dress wearing dudes that they can tell them to do whatever. And they're already doing it now. Look at that little, uh, what's his name? The hairy dude on Twitter. Every day he's be posting all this crap about, Oh, Biden did this, but it's like, dude, you're paid to get it to be a chump. Quit doing this. Cause you just right. get ratio, dude. It's ridiculous. Nobody's buying it, but they're, they don't care. They're doing it anyway. They're like, oh, hey, like, dude, you need to stop this. They just ignore you. You know what I mean? It's happening. We're yeah. we're all getting invaded. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but look how Biden is actually selling Israel down the road. Biden is now seriously selling Israel down the road. He genuinely is. He's setting yeah. Israel up. And the whole of the West are doing the same because it's coming oh, to yeah. an end. It's coming to an end, so they can't sell any more weapons, so they can't make any more money out of it, so now they're going to betray them because that is exactly what they're doing. They yeah. allowed the war to go on because all they're doing is making shitloads of money. And when it's all finished, it'll be BlackRock and all those people will go in with their big contracts to rebuild yeah. the city. How it's, convenient. It's, yeah, how convenient. I mean, they're going on like, oh, you know, British weapons. No, look, the simple truth of the matter is, as much as it pisses people off, and I love it on Twitter when I piss people off, is... <laughs> If they didn't want this to happen to them, look, you can't go and kick a hornet's nest and then complain that the hornets have come out and stung you. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Israel have warned you time and time and time again, if you come here, we will turn you into a car park. Israel are doing exactly mm -hmm. what they say. And to all you yeah. free Palestine people out there and all this, they'll cease fighting Gaza, Israel will not listen to you. They're not even going to listen to the USA, UK, or anyone else. They're going to do what they want to do. And the, P the Hamas in Gaza don't give a shit. They are not going to listen to you either. So sit down, shut up, and concentrate on your own country as it slowly falls apart while you're too busy trying to remove shampoo from a shelf in Sainsbury's. Grow the fuck up, people. Yeah. Get off Right. It. That's what this is all about. Isn't it? Hell of a yeah. narrative change how most people are being convinced that Israel is the bad guy in this. You know, it's... It's crazy. Yeah, okay, look, okay, look, kids are dying. 
Innocent people are dying. That's what happens in war. I'm sorry, but that's exactly what happens in war. Yeah, because these, these fuckers are hiding underneath hospitals. They're hiding oh, everywhere yeah. where civilians are. Because they're not exactly. they don't they don't want to fight an open war. They want to fight a coward's war. They want, you know, the kind of the you know the ambush attack. They want to do the the hits Urban first warfare, and then play yeah. victim. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, and also <laughs> when it all boils down to it, no offense to everybody else in the world. Sorry to break this to you, but it's got fuck all to do with us. We've got our own problems. Yeah. Can we sort them out yeah. first? Like our MPs Please. here in the UK go, oh, ceasefire in Gaza. Concentrate on your homeless, in your where you are voted into thing. Your homeless, your cost of living crisis, the people who can't afford to feed themselves, the old people who are dying of freezing cold because they can't afford the heating. Or Those are the people who voted else, you yeah. in. Yeah, no, no one in Gaza voted for you in. No one in Gaza even knows who the hell you are. You right. are voting in yep. to represent the country that you are in. Concentrate on where you live. And if you uh, don't if they come like over it, from Gaza, then they become voters, don't they? Yeah, they exactly. And who are they going to vote for? But the thing well, is, yeah, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Yes. And the thing is, what we have is a people, we have a whole Western world who've got no bollocks anymore. Oh, yep. oh, 100%. Well, I, you know, we just don't care. Oh. Well, that's that's my thing too. You notice they're trying to convince you to hate your country, and over here it's easy because if you're a person of color, they tell you, "Hey, they've been pushing you down the whole time anyway." Even though if you're a person of color, you're getting in college first, you're getting you're getting everything yeah. first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything first. But they're convincing them, "Hey, look what they're doing to you." Because two hundred years ago, there were some slaves. You know what I mean? Even though there was a whole group of freaking people that fought to free you, you know what I mean? If they didn't, you'd still be a slave. But but and, you know uh, what I'm saying? It's it, so so it's so easy to convince these people. Oh, they don't like you anyway. And now they got to push and be like, oh, well, I have this right to do this, and I have that right to do that. Screw America. And to me personally, I'm like, well, screw you, dude. You know what I mean? Because well, America gave you everything. Yeah, I mean, who was? Did you know who the first country in the world was to fight against slavery? Britain, Who's that? Britain, us, us, yeah. right? We spent thirty-seven point six percent of our gross national product to fight slavery. That's right. We were mm-hmm. the first country. Hundreds of thousands of Royal Navy troops and Royal Marines died to try and stop slavery. Not to mention the Barbary fucking pirate bullshit yep. that both of our countries had to deal with. That yep. was the first people we went to, uh, we declared war exactly. on after the revolution was the fucking Barbary pirates off the coast, like Libya and Africa and shit were kidnapping uh, our people and turning them into slaves yeah. and selling them out east and shit. Funny, and, yeah, uh, but funny, funny how that's not mentioned. Funny how that's no. not mentioned. <laughs> no, it's not. Funny mentioned. That, because there's nothing to gain from that, is there? Exactly. Right, exactly. No. Exactly, we did fight. We fought. We the British fought really hard to bring an end to slavery, and what we get is called horrible racists, and our flag's disgusting. Our Yo, flag back in those days was the indication of freedom. Well, they're selling us to the fucking uh, caliphate again. It's just uh, a little slower and more surreptitiously. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. They're still mm-hmm. selling us out. It's just a little Amen. bit different this time. Amen. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. God. Um, uh, thanks to everybody watching, man. We've almost had like almost 50 people watch the entire time, so this has been great. Uh, yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, we have yeah, really well, nice one. thank you, and uh, appreciate everybody watching. If you will, hit the links that are in the if you're on X watching, hit the links that's in the comments, and you'll come over here to YouTube. Uh, like, subscribe, share, and then look in our show notes for today in the description, and you'll see some other links for guests and members and stuff like that. But I got one little thing to go over. I just wanted to ask you guys, I'm gonna ask you like. If, if this is some conspiracy shit, British people don't know if you've heard about this, but basically yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, hey, cargo shit, a cargo shit went a shit. <laughs> a cargo ship went ape shit and fucking hit one of our main port bridges and completely fucked us. I don't know if it was like just an accident. I don't even know if the they ship lost it. power, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it, it, it almost like lost it. power and, and kind of what's happened happened. I mean, I think we've got to be careful that, you know, not every major tragedy is a conspiracy. Exactly. Sometimes yeah. just bad shit happens. And I think this is one of those kind of cases. I mean, I well, personally it's a shame. It's bullshit that happened. I'm not sure this was Russia or China or anything. It could no, have been no, fucking no, failing no. infrastructure. 
No, I, just, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, you can put as many safeguards in, in place as you want. When you've got a big bastard boat crashing into you, I mean... Well, I've, I mean, I've, I've, I've actually spent a bit of time looking into this because everybody goes, oh, conspiracy theory. Look, mm-hmm. the ship had been in dock, uh, and for the two days it was in dock, it was reporting that it was having electrical issues. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so there was a problem. There was a problem on the ship. The ship yeah, lost I think all it was electrical. An accident. Yeah, the ship lost all electrical power. They tried desperately. It even dropped both its anchors to try and stop itself. I heard yeah. that. Now, yeah. that bridge was built in the late seventies, as far as I'm aware, Please and it so. wasn't until 1982, after there was another accident like this in Florida, that they had what they call bridge defenders. Which is, if you look at modern day bridges. On their main supports, they've got the, these big, huge bumpers that are stuck a bit further out from the supports to protect the support from this happening. Mm-hmm. So if this had been a modern bridge, this shit wouldn't have happened. It would have just bumped into that, and that would have been the end of it. This was well, just, unfortunately, a terrible accident. It took the entire That's... fucking thing down, yeah. Yeah, well, it will do, because, I mean, no offense, it got hit by a bloody massive ship. Oh, fuck yeah. 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 Much weight was on that thing, man. They say we're, it we're had talking, a massive amount of weight. We're talking a couple hundred thousand tons of impact. Yeah? Even if it no was time. slowing down, that's a lot of impact hitting, hitting a specific... And the thing is, those copper bridges, it's an old bridge. It's mm, an right. old bridge. You hit any old bridge, and it's going to suffer because it's been there for such a long time. And the so, thing is, what is, what is being forgotten by a lot of people is there were construction workers on that bridge that died. Damn. Yeah, and and it is a tragic, tragic accident. And for people to go, oh, I mean, somebody went, oh, you can see the flashes on the other side where you know what the flashes were. The electricity. The electric- electricity, yeah, the electrical power yeah. cables that run along the bridge snapping. Okay, not I know we live in a world where everything's a conspiracy theory. This was an accident, a sad, tragic accident, yeah. but sadly also one that was waiting to happen sooner well, or later. It's yeah. going to happen, and it's it's terrible. And I, well, you know, I feel for the families that have lost oh, absolutely. their loved ones. Yeah. And please, not everything's a conspiracy theory. This was a horrible accident. Really agree. And yeah. you well, know, it's what, what kind of I mean, what's what's gonna happen since it's I mean, what's the conspiracy? What's the point of breaking this bridge? You mean know? oh, because it locks the port up. Yeah, oh, it, okay. it, it, it locked apparently us the, one way or another on the port, yeah. yeah. And right, then apparently, right, okay. Apparently, the guy who owned the container ship died two weeks ago in suspicious circumstances. And the thing is, uh, like, with all, like with everything, if you want to go looking for a conspiracy theory, you can find one. Okay, yeah. it's not like, and you can make one up in your own mind. You really can. It's I'll make accident. one up better than that. Well, let's <laughs> be honest. More of the shit. Well, I mean, yeah. you can totally understand. Like, if if they had more evidence, it's a totally believable story. If somebody said it was taken over, hack, whatever. But no, the scarier thing is, is the probably the truth is the fact that, man, we've not been keeping up our and, and renewing and supporting our infrastructure, yep. and we've been giving all that uh-huh. money to other countries and do, going to war, yep. just doing stupid shit with it. So now we've We're got shit in the same position, shit, bros. Yeah. We're so I mean, we fucked ourselves. And uh, yep. I think you're going to start seeing a lot more of that shit, man. Well, just just ask Tuna about the condition of uh, British roads at the moment. I mean, yeah, it's see, more we more drive down holes in the road than actual roads now. It, it's it's embarrassing. Yeah. It is embarrassing. Don't worry, though. We're giving all that international aid to you know India with their own space project. Oh, you know, yeah. oh and don't, and don't we're putting in kind of rainbow <laughs> crossing. Yeah, and don't forget the Ukraine. You know, where we're sending all that money to you. Yeah, the, you know, the biggest and, money laundering operation in the world, you know. And also, don't forget, yeah. we send all our military equipment over, which has left the British Army now with only 11 how it's... Uh, Let's face it, there's guns. no one there to use it anyway, so someone else... Oh, no, there's, there's no... I mean, there's one bloke, probably, you know, who could probably do the job. Uh, but, Transport for yeah. London. Oh, yeah, Transport for well, yeah, London. Yeah, again, and, uh, they're as woke as... They're, they're terrible. They've renamed all the, rail, the railway stations woke names. Oh, oh fuck yeah! God's They're so doing goodness. that to schools and shit. Yeah, oh, I'm no. with this shit ever end. Um, I I, <sighs> I know it, it, I haven't seen the like in my particular area. Of course, I see a lot of news stories and things throughout the country of you know the occasional bridge collapse and, and things, infrastructural things. I live in a state that's actually called one of the nicknames in North Carolina is the road state because we're known to have like really high quality highways and roads. So that hasn't degraded to the point to be totally noticeable but that's something my state focuses heavily on is fucking roadways but um 
I can see that they're just not spending the money. They're undercutting like uh, yeah. uh, teachers and policemen and stuff like that. It's it's not good at all. Dude, it's a scam. Right here in California, they've been working on the 91 freeway for like 20 years, dude. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's all like that in England. Yeah, you know I mean, well, that, I've, I've watched that construction's been going on since I was a kid, man. Well, just I mean, a just, scam. Just by us, we're having, uh, uh, by us, we're having these um, HS, HS2 high speed railway, two thing that's been taking years to build. I mean, uh -huh. years to build. Yeah. And up, up by where my, up by Birmingham Airport, which I don't live too far away from, they've spent um, six months re redoing a roundabout and they <laughs> finished it. And I'll be honest, it looks exactly the same as it did six months ago. The road looks a bit cleaner, but it's exactly the same layout. So what the fuck were you doing? Six months. We didn't months. have roundabouts here until recently. They're a new oh, well, we, we, we always, here in the UK, we, we, we love our roundabouts. We love sticking Indeed, roundabouts yeah. all over the place. Yeah, everywhere there's opportunity to stick around about. We can even have a fully functioning four-way intersection with lights that works great. We rip them out and put a roundabout in it that screws it up for everybody else. It's, we just have this fascination with roundabouts. At least in the in the US, when you build a roundabout, you don't put anything in the middle of the roundabout. We put trees and stuff, so you actually can't see what the fuck's coming around the roundabout yeah, we don't, until it's we don't right on you. <laughs> at least not in my area. But we didn't we didn't start having roundabouts until like in my area until like the last maybe fuck fifteen years. I don't even know if it's been that long, but um, it was weird to me. And they basically did it as an alternative to stoplights. I don't know if that's what y'all call them, but you know, like traffic lights. And yeah. Um, yeah. And so uh, I, I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know, I had no idea the first time I went through one, man. It was in front of a Walmart, too, which is pretty, you know, it's usually like the biggest store in town in America. It's going to be your fucking Walmart. But, I mean, when I, was down, when I was down south, when I was down in the countryside, there was a road. We went down this road and it said there's a roundabout coming up. So, okay, slow down. And there's a roundabout. And there's no other roads on it. So it's just a roundabout in the middle of a road for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Now, so like, now you guys normally, normally they go to places like there's like usually two four roads coming up, and this one was right. literally a roundabout. You have to spend that no, money to get it next year. But there was no reason for the guys, roundabout. There was, I mean, one side was a fifty foot drop down, you know, and the other side was a, a solid brick wall. So what was the roundabout there for? It's because we had some spare money, so we'll just put a roundabout in place. It's just mental. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, well, I was going to say. Are, are you guys are you guys saying roundabout like the same thing as a traffic circle? We call them traffic circles over here. We have a pretty <laughs> famous one in Long Beach, I guess. The guy that made it died on it, and so did his son. Uh, but yeah, we got those things, man. I think we got a couple of them. I think it's the same thing. I'm gonna yeah. have to look it up. Yeah, we it call is. them roundabout. Traffic things. circles are other thing yeah. we say for it. you're we right. We call right. them roundabouts here, but oh, okay. certain yeah, certain places we can also call them islands because they look like mm. an island, but right. it's usually roundabouts. Or islands, oh, okay. Yeah, but traffic right. circle, whatever. Basically, it means you go round the circle for round no reason. <laughs> yeah, for no reason. Yeah, and, right. and you can and you can never get in the right line. You're always in the wrong line. You you're, you're right. never getting in the right line to go yeah. where you gotta go. You fucking die and, then, and hit the person who's tired of waiting that pulls out in front of you and shit. <laughs> oh, and then here in the UK, there was another thing where we don't actually have a roundabout. We actually paint a white circle in the middle of a road, and that's a roundabout as well. And you'll get no done. Way. No, if you drive over the over the circle was painted on the floor. This is it, yeah. Literally painting circles on the road. And if you're caught by the police driving over the circle, you'll actually get done for breaking the law. It's a traffic offense. You have to drive yeah, around and paint a painted circle in the middle of the road. You have to drive around it and pretend it's an <laughs> island, but it's not. It's just a painted circle. It's we yeah. do some crazy shit over here in the UK for roads. Do you really, have really, really uh, do y'all have traffic cameras like the the, uh, oh, everywhere! You're speeding and shit, or going. Yeah, yeah, we have them. Yeah, yeah. We I, also heard, I heard UK. UK is all about uh, what is it? CCTV. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Judas yeah. Priest. You know, Judas Priest, electric guy, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah they got. I, I've watched a lot of videos on CCTV oh, over there, man. Not only do we have cameras, we also have police vans that hide with a camera hidden in it on random points of the road and catch you speeding that way without any warning. No way. Yeah, mm, yeah drive along, you see a white van, a white van with the back window open, and as you drive past, you go, oh, "Fuck!" Because you know you've just got nailed speeding. Yeah, yeah. I unfortunately, I have been to it. Yeah, but fortunately, here in the UK, we've clocked onto this, so now we have a, an app on our phones 
the tell us and warn us where all the mobile speed cameras are. <laughs> Yeah, oh, our, yeah, like on our GPS, like if you use Google or Apple GPS to get somewhere, that's something I noticed traveling, uh, going on short, long trips or just using it to get somewhere. And people will put on there like, hey, there's a yeah. there's a speed trap here. Yeah. We call them a speed trap. And or I mean, there's an accident, shit like that. It's really cool. Yeah, we've got mm -hmm. it on. We, our app's called Waze. But the other thing is when we were driving, if you're driving, it used to be if somebody come up the other way and they started rapidly flashing your lights at you, that was them warning you that there was a speed trap ahead. If you get caught flashing your lights, that's a traffic offense, and you'll get done for that for warning people there's a speed <laughs> trap ahead. Oh, yeah, that's I think you yeah. can get, yeah, we have something like that over here too. Yeah. Oh, and then, of course, then there's, of course, there's the old random copper who will just step out in the middle of the road with a radar gun and point it at you. Yeah. Well, see, it's just yeah, good okay. manners to flash your lights at the people coming and saying, hey, man, there's a trap. You know, that's just what we do. We do that <laughs> for that yeah, and an for offense. accidents. Yeah, it's an, right. it's, it's an offense here in the UK to do that. So you can't do that, even though everybody still does that. <laughs> but now I live, right. I, I live where uh, you'll go certain places and everybody fucking waves as to not be rude when you're passing in a fucking vehicle. <laughs> like I'm in the South, you know, like Archie, Archie, Collins, Archie <laughs> Collins comments good about the mini round about when you all get there, because you all have to give way to the right. Mm -hmm. So if all three of you arrive at the same time, You've all got to give way to each other. So what actually happens is all three of you sit there and don't move because you're all supposed to be giving way to each other, and then you all move simultaneously and then almost have a crash. <laughs> we uh, uh, at some point, at some point, I'm I'm coming over there uh, like a vacation or trip or something. Um, as m I probably won't rent a vehicle, but I I, I still want to try to drive on the other side just once to see what it feels like. Because I've never been, yeah, you know, I've never been anywhere that drives on the opposite side. I think sure you can, I, I would do it quickly because there may not be much of a UK left to visit. That's what yeah. right. me, man. And I, I mean this like I'm not even trying to be funny, like legit, man. Because like one of my, me and my wife's dream. Okay, dogs, I'm almost done. <laughs> they know I'm the only grown up here to get them anything. But uh, you know, one of my dreams is to see that and to, and to go over there and like see where my people came from, you know, and, and landmarks and things like uh, Stonehenge, shit like that, you know. And everything I'm seeing is telling me it ain't going to be there for me. And even if it is, it might not be very safe for me. To, you know, I won't feel as safe uh, in certain areas that I, I would love to have gone to London or something. Now it's like if I was coming over there, I'd probably fucking go like the town where Tuna's at or something and fucking stay there and hang out with him or some shit. Cause I ain't going fucking London no more. Fuck that. <laughs> no, no, no. Recommend. but, no, uh, but no. yeah, it, it breaks my heart, man. Cause I always wanted to go over there so bad. And, 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 you know, it was like uh, Tuna and I've had discussions like where he's talking about how, like, knowing people that would be kind of freaked out to come over here because we've all got guns and shit. And it's like the opposite for me. It's like, man, I don't want to fucking go over and get stabbed by a fucking Abdul. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. goddamn, uh, I'd rather get shot by goddamn uh, John or Raekwon over here. I, I, I'll, I'll take my chances here. You know what I mean? Right. Because I, uh, I can shoot back over here. You mean? Right. Yeah, exactly. I can duck and pop, man. But uh, that's just I like mean, I think that's so unfair, man. It's I don't, I just don't get that. Tell it's me about it. Fuck. But it totally makes sense why you do it. Though. I mean, obviously the proof is in the pudding. You can, you can see why. And then you just make people think guns are crazy. Guns are crazy. I bet you your media and, and most people would be like, oh yeah, that's crazy. If I, all the people got guns, this goddamn Mad Max over there or some shit. Well, it didn't. It wasn't that way till now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they right. fucked everything up. Oh, oh, here, here in the media, oh, you know, it's terrible. It's terrible. The all the guns and that over there. And I'm like, give me a gun, please, please let right, me have exactly. a gun. I need a well, gun. Like, I need a gun. Saying, but yeah, I, but, I, but the simple truth of the matter is, if you know, as the saying goes, I mean, obviously, ex-military. I, I love my firearms. Yeah, I genuinely love my firearms. I, you know, right. I, wish I, was, I do. I love firearms. And the simple truth of the matter is, I've always been the proponent that. The only person who can stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Exactly. It's the same. It always will be. We it's see it same. time and again over here. They just don't report it a lot. They don't like to. Of course they don't. Of course they don't. You don't want to actually reinforce the fact that actually owning a firearm might be a good idea. I mean, see, we, have, we have a lot of situations, uh, especially since the years that like sh public shootings and shit like that have been such more, much more in the public consciousness and things are much more divided. You're much more likely say, say for instance, somebody pops off in a church, let's say fucking North Carolina, say down the road, man, there's a million churches where I live in the Bible belt. Uh, yeah. Fucking uh, goddamn 
Uh, fuck, man. I'm trying to think of a, a fucking Festus or what. I'm trying to think of a fucking Southern name. That'd be funny, but I can't. <laughs> but uh, but uh, goddamn John Boy or whatever might have something in his Jethro. pocket. So if, yeah, Jethro. Jethro. I can't even think of a Southern name because I, I, I'm not really around anybody with those sort of names. But um, you would have somebody. You, you're more likely now to have somebody else sitting in that church if something pops off. They'll be right there, and and you see reports of it, but they'll only be shared through certain media because they, they don't like that out there at all. They don't like the oh, stories okay. where, you know, something pops off at a school and it gets taken care of in a timely manner. And, you know, uh, they, they don't like those stories, you know, and they never like good stories, but the, it doesn't push their narrative anymore. I'm coming back. All right. Well, um, let's wrap up, fellas. Man, we've had a hellaciously hey. consistent audience this entire time. I really Excellent. appreciate oh, yeah. it. Man. It's been awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, I've gotten to subscribers go. today. It's been great. Um, if you're watching on X, like I said, uh, you can find the links over here. You can uh, find links in the, the description for today's show that's on right now links on everywhere. YouTube. Follow us on X. Uh, come over here. Subscribe. Get the links in the description. Uh, Kiara and Layla would, would very much like you to subscribe. <laughs> uh, Kiara, she talks like, I don't know if you, you guys ever seen Django Unchained? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, like when they go to the plantation, like I always joke when I got trapped in here for COVID, I went insane and all my dogs have a voice now, like a crazy movie where they talk, right? When she talks like this <laughs> lady that uh, Django meets when they go looking for these white slaver brothers and Django's in that blue shirt and shit and Don Johnson's there and they say, big daddy up in the house go. And this one slave girl takes Django and shows him around the plantation. And she's like, that big daddy house up there. That's how, that's how, uh, <laughs> and then Layla, this is my other girl here, Layla. Oh my God, don't show me. She talks like uh, Marge Simpson, but yeah, that's my girls right there. But uh, I appreciate everybody who came to hang out with our goofy asses today. I appreciate you guys for being on here with me and Tuna and coming and hanging. Let's go around real quick before we leave. Uh, Thrash, tell people where they can find you. Of course, links are in the description, but tell them if you got something going on next, if they can come find or maybe a new video or something. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm just out here on YouTube. Um, it's mostly just guitar stuff. If you're into like doing guitars and stuff or seeing what's going on, I have a new one coming up. I'm editing it right now. But uh, if you want to, um, you want to see me trolling, I'm right there on X all day getting blocked by everybody. That's just you're the same thing. Joe's, yeah, follow Joe's him on X. For some laughs. Yeah, go over to Twitter. Oh. Follow Thrash Potato. You can just type in Thrash Potato in the search bar, and it brings him up. Uh, you see the symbol in the chat here, same one. And uh, you got to follow him. He's funny as shit on there. And then if you're into guitar and stuff like that, come on over. Uh, Gobster, he's got his too. <laughs> What's that one's name, Gobster? This one's Lola. Oh, okay, cool. I got Layla. You got Lola. That's funny. Lola. Um, yeah. yeah, my old. We got a Luna over here. here. Oh, I've got I've got a Luna that's a cat. Get off me now. Oh, God. Don't so, Gobster, what you got? Uh, I know tomorrow's Easter and whatnot, but uh, people yeah, hold, know on, can find hold on. The cat's coming. The cat's coming. Oh, my cat. cool. What's its name? Uh, well, they all call it Luna. I call it Captain Meow. Oh, okay. Captain there you go. Meow. I got we have yeah. three ourselves, man. It's like a fucking uh, animal house over here. Um, but what you got yeah, going on, man? Uh, go yeah, over to Gobster. It's G O B S T 3 R. Go over there yep. and subscribe, but tell them what you got going on. Anything new or coming up? Well, there's uh, several videos in production. There's one actually producing right now, which is uh, about the Metropolitan Police again, because they're such a wonderful, wonderful organization. <laughs> I love them to bits, Can't and sooner or later, they're either going to block me or arrest me, or probably both. Um, other than that, obviously, tomorrow's Easter Sunday, so um, we should be, uh, I should be having a bit of a prayer and that. As you do, because you know, religion and all that stuff is sort of come back to being important. Yeah, happy Easter, everybody life. that celebrates or even yeah, happy home. Easter. Yeah, yeah, happy Easter. Yeah. Don't yeah, eat that's, too much that's, chocolate. Yeah, that's Easter, not Ramadan or any other religion. It's Easter. You know, the thing that we used to celebrate before, Jesus eggs, bunnies, the good stuff. Yeah, Jesus good eggs, bunnies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, back all back in the day when you know our God was Man. important. I yeah, got a lot yeah, of good memories right. making making Easter eggs. Like with my like some of the good memories I have of being a child is making Easter eggs and being so excited about that every year with my mom. So yeah, uh, right. shout out to mom, love you. I, uh, I I uh, I just think you know people should be able to do whatever they want as far as that stuff goes. And, and my yeah. heart's out there with anybody who believes, and because I feel like you guys are getting screwed with right now. So happy Easter, yeah, all amen. people celebrate, happy and happy Easter. Easter to the people that don't. Man, we're all together in this shit right now. 
Yeah, um, absolutely. And now absolutely. my a hole, a, the a hole on the internet, uh, the one of the other thirds of the culture council group. What you got going on, Tuna? Uh, a little bit of a busy week actually coming up for streaming. Um, so I'm with the lovely uh, Ryan Roger F.A. on Monday night. It's WrestleMania weekend, so coming up. So if you're a wrestling fan, you can know, be buzzing about it. So uh, he's starting a wrestling show called Monday Nitro. So I'm going to be there 9 o'clock UK for him. Tuesday, Retro Valley with Joe, assuming he's back from assignment being the Easter Bunny. Uh, and then we've got Thursday, we've got the Power Station. So wrestling and gaming talk. That's going to be WrestleMania predictions with B Hop and Crossman Wrestling. Yeah, WrestleMania oh, next weekend. Be, uh, if it won't be Saturday yeah. again, and then we've got Culture Council, Cancel Culture, Council, Culture Culture, Culture Council. Cancel, uh, soon to be cancelled, Culture Council. <laughs> um, right. I need, I need yeah. to get get one or two videos out on stuff. I'm, I'm lagging behind on that, but unfortunately, it's kind of one or the other. I can only really kind of work on the live yeah. aspect or not. But it's been very busy. WrestleMania weekend is always great if you're a wrestling fan. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Check that one out. Check it out, yeah, man. man. That's gonna be fun. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It's the only it's the first WrestleMania I've been excited about in years and years. So it should be interesting. Oh, yeah, man. Plus, I've watched Thank it you. most of my life, so I got I can't let 40 slip me by and not watch. I've never been able to say I was a fan, you know. But uh, everybody knows where to find me. It's at, at Culture Pop B Hop. Um, I'm your Culture Pop, I suppose. <laughs> B Hop, and I really do appreciate everybody who's watched, man. Big time. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, like, share, find us all. And uh, we'll be back next Saturday at four for another Culture Council. And we'll be reviewing episode four of X-Men. I hope it stays good and no more like pining after a naked Wolverine in the shower. Yeah, but we'll mean. see. I guess we'll see. But I mean, uh, we get, you right. know, I gave it like a fucking eight or something and it was really good. So thank you to everybody that watched. Uh, I, in, I can't express to you how much we appreciate you. Take care. Much thank love. And we'll see you next time. All Peace. right. We're just normal men. What do you mean, normal men? We're just innocent men. Uh. <laughs>